I do like everything in life, yeah. I do. So you never get sad or upset? Nope. No! <laughs> I'm always a happy girl. No, Molly. Doing stuff that I like. That's that's my motto. Okay, that's my motto. Thank you. I just want to die so I never see your face. That's not very nice. I have got autism. Um. Ooh. What is autism? This is the story of nine young people. Nine! All challenged by autism. Autism means there's nothing wrong with you. You're 10 out of 10 good and you can fit in with this world. And one day you will be loved for it. <laughs> Over four months. This is so awkward. They will try to improve their lives. Naughty boy. No, you're not naughty. Very good, Ben. Mm. Stop biting yourself. As together they will attempt for them. The impossible. Come on the show. Mike, please. Thank you. Leah, yeah, come down and come up. Come on. Have you done it? To write and perform in. Take it away, Leah! Their very own stage show. This is Andrew. He's 17 and lives in Merseyside. There's water on it, Andrew. Oh dear. <laughs> oh no. What are you going to do? Oh dear. Help. Oh dear. Help. 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 There's water on my trampoline. Help. I don't think he'd ever be independent. It's gone over my socks. They're, they're getting all wet. I mean, he has an absolute fiasco about him trying on shoes, mm -hmm. you know, because he, he, he won't... Uh, he used to get really upset, he'd start crying, he wouldn't try a shoe on, let's get out of here, all this carry on. Having his hair cut, he'd throw up in the... He'd be sick in the barbers, for example. You know, he'd get that upset by the noise of the, um, of the shaver or, his, the, or the scissors. Um, and we'd be arguing with each other who's going to take him because no one wanted to take him, you know, because it would be that embarrassing to some extent. Yeah, it was always me who took him. <laughs> My socks have all wet. Well, you can change them, can't you? Andrew is yeah. said to have limited social skills, yeah, problems with communication and a restricted imagination. I need to, I need to just try and cover. His parents describe him as classically autistic. Soaking wet. You see, I, I can't cope with changes because it... I find them very embarrassed. I'm, I'm just embarrassed about it. How does it make you feel when something changes? It makes me. F it doesn't make me feel happy. You feel sad. It just makes me feel sad. That's what it just does. What else does your autism make you do or make you feel? Sometimes I like, I like playing the same things which I like. That's what I like. What? Some, sometimes I'm not bored with them. Do you think you have got autism? Well, that's a bit pointless. What am I doing here? Yeah, of course I've got autism, otherwise I wouldn't be here. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Well, wait a minute, what? Do, you, do I think I have autism? I know how I have autism. What, what's the point in asking that? I mean, I am here. Should have just interviewed me over the phone. 
Oh, I knew there was something different about Ben almost as soon as he was born. He used to scream till he went purple all the time. And it didn't matter whether um, you picked him up or put him down, everything made him angry. And I felt so bad. As a mom with your first child, you're not supposed to hate them. You know, it's not supposed to be like that. I go first. <laughs> so should I push this button? Yeah. Mom, why do I get to become mom? Ben lives with his mum Becky and his two younger brothers. Game should be Charlie and Harry, who has Down syndrome. Do your best and lose. No, I'm keeping that. Oh. Oh. What are you doing? It's my ball. Ben has been diagnosed as having high-functioning autism. He's also exceptionally intelligent. He's unable to cope with or understand his own or other people's emotions and is deeply competitive. I'm watching. Lose, 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 lose. No, 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 no. I did suggest it might be nice <laughs> if Ben didn't want to you know. Oh, oh, no, 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 you're you're upsetting me now. Oh, you got a strike, it's a good thing. No, it's not. I suck, okay? Never made a friend and kept it for more than, than two weeks, three weeks. I am very lonely in this, uh, in this world. So everybody who first meets him, he seems quite outgoing and outspoken and lively. And it's all, it's a bit of a front because it hides quite a sensitive side. He's quite frightened of lots of things. And when he gets stressed and frightened, you get the anger. And that, it is scary because the older he gets, the less convinced I am that he's gonna have an okay life. You know what, I just feel like some, something has gone inside of me taken hold of my soul and he's not and he's not letting go. It's just I've got no it's like I've got no free will really. And that makes me upset. That makes me think about what a crummy life I have. I'm here and apologize. Sorry, happy? No, not oh, happy. Then okay. I'm still waiting. Sorry I told you to F off. You happy now? Autistic spectrum disorder or ASD covers a wide range of abilities. And this ambitious project Sorry Leah will provide insight to this. Okay, that time I actually meant it. More able autistic youngsters like Ben will work side by side. The spider's got me. <laughs> with those who are of lower ability. Channel four. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Who is there? Joseph is 11 and is diagnosed as severely autistic. Oh, and you Okay, take it on. He has a limited capacity to communicate and is supported at all times by adults who are familiar to him. How many baths have you had today, Jay? Oh. How, how come Joseph has several baths every morning? It's an activity he, he likes to feel, but it is a good way of saving like his clothes because if he has done a very tepping or, or he'd be walking around in his pants all day, you know. Walking past the window like a little sumo. But people in our area know him and they're not offended by it. So, what does he sometimes do in the bath that you have to be careful of? We have to take all containers out because he'll just. <laughs> Bottles, anything with anything in the And he'll be laughing his head off. Sometimes you have to laugh, but you could cry because it's better than last year when he was smearing all over the bathroom. You know, he was smearing poo all over the bathroom, pooing in the sink. You know, that's something I don't really want to go through ever again. For Joe and the others taking part, putting on the show is a chance for them to stand up and show the world what they're really capable of. Up to you, Dad. No, you go. Ow! Oh! Ow! Oh, that hurt. But what they do will be up to them. It's just like a journey to the unknown, isn't it? I'll be all right once I get there. Just to 
bit nervous about meeting these new people. It's day one of the stage show. Let me just wait for my mum. The nine cast members have travelled from across the country to the Lyric in Hammersmith. There's your pass. You just need to make sure you've got them on. Yeah. Yeah. Very um, happy and relaxed and cool. Today, they'll come together for the first time. I'm not very bashful at the moment, so I'm happy to talk song, but I can't just jump in straight away. I'm waiting for them. That's what it's all about. But sometimes if they don't jump in, you can. Otherwise, you want to social with someone, they don't know you exist. <laughs> and I do bloody exist. <laughs> sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm sure. I'm not 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 A trained care team is on site to ensure the cast's welfare. That's it, good. And they'll work with two of the Lyric's top directors. After you, Monty. <laughs> Between them, they put on hundreds of shows. But they've never had a cast quite like this before. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to ask now all the parents to leave the room so we can start working. Have you come across autism or autistic young people before? No. And my name is Monse, which I'll say again is short for Monse Wright, if that helps anyone. And I'm David, David Baker, and I'll be directing this theatre show with Monse. Slightly daunting, yeah, to, to have a whole room full of um, um, uh, autistic people and having to, to work with them, yeah. People like me, I've, can, I've found out, cannot, I repeat, cannot take authority. They will, they will only do uh, uh, what you say if they feel like doing it. One, two, three. Monse. Meow. 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 Standing up. Standing up. Meow. 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 Everybody stands up. Everybody stands up. Ben, do you want to stand up? My name is Claire Doran. Go. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Claire Doran. <laughs> Very good. Have we all stood up and doing it? Yeah. Although, although I'm autistic, I am sane. Okay. <laughs> oh. So it's making you feel a bit uncomfortable when people do sounds like animals? No, it makes me feel uncomfortable when people be stupid. Ben, I don't blame you because I go to an you know, autistic school called um, Spa and sometimes when I'm in lessons we, we do these things and, and I think and, and I think it's, it's really an, uh, annoying some, sometimes because it makes you feel like silly, makes you feel like you're insane or you're crazy. Oh, I know I'm insane. I was talking to someone who was attempted to commit suicide twice. Suicide? Suicide. He will tell you he's tried to kill himself. He's threatened. He's not actually tried to hurt himself. He's never hurt himself. And I truly don't believe that he would. Um, he just wants me and everyone else to see how unhappy he is. Basically, I've got the most negative personality you could ever see. Would you like to change that? Nope. That's what you want me in a nutshell. Oh, oh, hate, my, hate my life, want to kill myself, and negative personality. I'll introduce yourself. Uh, your name is Ben, isn't it? And you're Joseph. Jonathan. Jonathan, oh yeah. My name's Andrew, guys. And Jackson's the name. The group have so far spent an hour together. I feel like I've been hit by a truck right now. They're lovely, but this yeah. guy stood this hard, hard, hard work. We've got ten minutes to calm down. And I'm sure they'll be doing something different when you go back in, because now they know everybody's name. We could be doing uh, a rehearsal, uh, rehearsal play, uh, but the not, play to, yeah, uh, uh, not to sit for uh, a lunatic asylum. I never work together. I'm not good in a group. I'm good. I know. I'm good at giving something to do and doing it. Autistic people are often isolated. So by making the cast work together, the production is tackling this issue head on. <laughs> Regardless of their abilities, 
the entire cast will contribute to the final show. I, I brought this CD in uh, by the 50 Cent crew because I especially like his music and he taught me a lot to become a rapper myself. Wow. It's up to you. It's, it's up it's to you. your choice. It's your choice your what you bring. Problem. It's something that either means something to you or that it has a story. The girl is supposed to be me and then there are four other boys um, who uh, were doing warrior dancing. And why are they special to you? Because Lilo and Stitch and uh, Lion King are my best movies. How long have you have you had them? Just today. Just today. Just today. This is the story of Bambi. This is the part I like. He goes out with his girlfriend, who that is that is Feline. That is Feline is a female deer because she's Bambi's girlfriend. Sometimes I'm obsessed about love and friendship. That's a lovely mm. obsession, though. Yeah, love is good. Is this an age where you, you would dearly love to sort of form something, a loving relationship? Is this, a, you know, where he would be? Is it that age, isn't he, where he would want that to happen? Mm. And even for a neurotypical person, a non-ASD person. That's mm -hmm. difficult to the best of times. Yeah. Never mind if you have, you have ASD or not. Magic the moments When two hearts start caring Magic Andrew was diagnosed with autism when he was five years old. Memories we've been sharing. After his parents noticed his obsessive behaviours. I'll never forget the moment we kissed the love of the hay Now 17, he's still unable to dress himself in the morning, leave the house unaccompanied, or use money. Some people say, don't they, that oh, they wouldn't have their child any other way, that they, they have a diagnosis and they embrace it and this is them and, you know, and I think, well, that's great for you, but I'm not like that. If I could choose, you know, whether Andrew had autism or he didn't, I would choose that he didn't, you know, without a doubt. Not because I don't love him for what he is, I do, I, I love him to bits and I love every part of him, but I want, I want normality for him. I want, you know, I want him to have a normal life, I want him to be able to be independent and, and he never will be. And it's really, it's it's very sad because you want that you want that for, everybody wants it for their child and he'll never have that. Okay, you tell me what these are. Now, no, these are my engines that are all together. This is Thomas with Annie and Clarabel, and this is Edward, and this is Henry, and this is Gordon, and this is Oliver, James. and those ones are Bill and Ben. This is Stepney, and that's Saucy. I'm really desperate for a girlfriend at the moment, you know, sort of, he really would, would like to go out with someone. That one is Billy, and that one is Fergus. I have this, this ideal that it would be, that there's somebody out there that he, that, um, who perhaps has autism, but not as bad as Andrew, maybe. And if they didn't live too far, we could go out and help them. So at the moment, that's what I'm kind of clinging to, that that might happen. Upside down, upside down. Andrew has spent most of his first day in the production with 19-year-old Claire. Oh, I see that. Like Bambi 2, they were chasing after him. But, but in my new film, Bambi 2, he gets pricked by my... You and Claire are making some friends, aren't you? Nice friend. Yeah, I did make a nice friend. I'm so polite. Myself. <laughs> While 
while some enjoy being together, for others, it brings the reality of their condition home. Okay, I'm upset. Yeah, but we've had this conversation. I'm, go I'm, going, to draw I'm well. going to draw the line in the fact that I'm not a happy person. People wonder why I wish I was dead. Oh, I wonder because I think you're... I don't know, okay? Bad. Something inside of me has made my life, all, all my existence, horrible. I don't want rid of it. Either that thing goes or I go with it. It makes me sad to hear you talk about that. No, I know. I'm sorry. Faults and all, I made you. What? <laughs> if you'd made me, I, I, I wouldn't even be here. You're my child. I know. I know that. So it makes me sad to think that you don't actually want to be here. I'm sorry. A drama therapist experienced in working with people with autism is on hand at all times. We need to really talk about Ben. But he's telling you this is who I am. I'm a negative person. He stated it from you have to learn to accept him as he is without trying to change him. That is the only way you're going to be able to cooperate with Ben and have okay. Ben in the group. Great job so far. Okay. Yeah. You've got it, buddy. Shall we have a, a nice yes. moment all together? Maybe one quick word by every one, very quick, just one word of how do you think the day went? Disappointing and um, uh, um, enlightening. Really, 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 actually feel really good. Job and brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, that's the word. And to me it was yeah. really enlightening. Give each other a round of applause and a pat in the back. Round of applause, pat in the back. Well done. Well done. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, Bye. everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Hasta, Hasta la vista. Woo Be able to make a show with these guys in four and a half weeks' time? No. <laughs> My first instinct is no. No. A show? No. We might do something. A show? <laughs> What do you think is good? Children! Rehearsals for the big show have begun. The first task for the directors is to get the group to work together as a team. <laughs> How is this going to happen? What, what kind of play are we going to put on? You feeling all right? There's three people behind the curtain and there's one person throwing water and, and spitting at somebody. Mm -hmm. Clap! Very good, sir. Come on, jump. I don't know what. People with autism have impaired social skills. Yeah. I'm your best friend. Yeah. For Andrew, everything has to be learnt. Did you ask her, could you give her a hug? Yeah, I did ask her to, and she said she would. Mm -hmm. did, you did you give her a kiss? I did ask, yeah. And where did you give her a kiss? <laughs> <laughs> On her lips. Oh, no, well, maybe you'd be better sure? if you just yes, had a... Yes, sure. Well, listen, maybe you'd be better if you just say if you want a kiss. Why don't you give her a kiss on the cheek? That might be better. Oh, would it? Yeah, no, I think no, so. I thought she was nice. I know you did, but when you know somebody for a long time, then you can, you can have hugs and you can give people a kiss on the lips. But when you don't really know them very well, and you've only met her today, haven't you, so you don't really know her very well... But... But, Mum, mm. listen. Go on. My kiss was very nice. I know. See, I'm, sh I'm not saying it wasn't. I'm sure it was. No. I think tomorrow what we should do is... What? Is ...work on three things. Do oh, what? Three things. Firstly, is that you give Claire a little bit more space. If I'm this close to you, right, that's... 
It's very, very close. It's too close. It is very close. Too close. Isn't it? Don't need to stand it's too close no. to me, Dad. I'm mm. close to you. If I went and sat next to you like that all the time, what would you think? It's I a bit close. Yeah. It's it's too close. close. So, tomorrow, that seat your chair can be about that far away. So it's, it's an arm's distance. Okay. Okay, like that. Yeah. Okay, that so that's the first thing. Distance. Distance. Okay. Maybe the next one is about hooks. Yeah, All right. you could ask for a hook. That's no, a well good idea. Done. I really, asked for really a hook. I know you did. You did but very I well. Then. Just ask for a hook right at the end of the day. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Not at the start of the day, not at the middle of the day, not when you finish the break, right at the end of the day. Okay, okay. Okay, what am I doing? Okay. One final one is a kiss, okay? Mm. Right, now. What are you going to do, do you think? A kiss on a cheek. That's a good idea, isn't it? Now, a kiss, right, is again right at the end of the day with the hug. Should we, should we try this? No, no, don't kiss no, me. I'm not, not going to kiss you, don't worry, I'm not going to kiss you. <laughs> okay. Let's just see if we pretend, okay? Yeah. Now, it's the end of the day, okay? And we're about to go. What can you we're say? We're about to go home and pretend I'm Claire. What would you say? Can I have a hug? Oh, yes. Yes, you can. Yes, oh, yeah, that's, well, that's that nice. wonderful. A hug first, right? Yeah. And you can ask her for a kiss on the cheek at the end of the day. Yes, yes. Okay. You write them out in full sentences, okay, at the end of the day. So it'll be, for example, I will ask. Claire for a hug at the end of the day. Yeah. If Claire says yes, I'll hug. Yeah, uh, yes, okay. yes. If Claire says no, I'll oh, no. <laughs> Any parents of a child with ASD will tell you this. When they strike a friendship up with someone who shows that equal kind of uh, reciprocation in the friendship back, mm. then that's so heartening for you as a yeah. parent. You sit there thinking, I can't believe it, it's happening, well, it really thankfully, happens, you know, it's and it, it's, it's you, such you a rare it. event. Claire could talk as long as Andrew about Bambi. Yeah. You know, I mean, I wonder how long can anyone talk about Bambi, as much as, as, as them two could, yeah. but they clearly could. Anyone who had a shower this morning? Not me. I had a bath. I told my mum to give me some space today, and why would she just be bossing me about? Yeah. I bet you were at lunchtime, so they'll serve us Yeah, I'm giving you some space with you. Yeah. Doing well. To help the cast bond, the directors have arranged a treat. A music session. This gentleman here is Byron. With a top vocalist. Are you ready to start this? Yeah. You know my name is... Byron! Byron! It's widely believed that music has beneficial therapeutic effects for people with autism. Andrew! Leah! Leah! Claire! Claire! Alexander! Alexander! Dan! Dan! Dan. Joseph! David! David! Ben! Ben, Ben. I just don't want to play these games. Why don't you like them? Tell me. I just don't. Bungalow, bung, bungalow. Bungalow, bung, bungalow. Bungalow, bung, bungalow. There is one cast member to whom music is everything. Nineteen-year-old Claire Doran has studied music since she was five. And my fingertips, they're holding on to the cracks in our foundation. And I know that I should let go, but I can't. No. I have ambitions of being a singer. Classical music and pop are the ones I want to work with. I'm very good at classical music and pop music. Just really enjoy them. Son bella pastorella, che scende ogni mattina. 
But despite her obvious talent, Claire suffers a fundamental lack of self-esteem. So about the youth yeah. factor there, there's a boy named Dale who said he wanted to have sex with me, so... Oh, right. <laughs> so that's what it reminds me of. OK. That's repulsive. Hmm. Yeah. Son bella pastorella, che c'è un de ogni mattina. I have to be careful how I, uh, how I handle her. Um, she can get... She can get terribly upset by um, criticism. For Claire, even criticism on a tiny scale is hard to take. Down by the river where nobody goes, there's a boogie 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 I don't like making mistakes because back in the past when I did, people kind of made a mockery of me. I'm too frightened to make mistakes. <laughs> people can't disrespect you for, they, for who you are, they can't. They absolutely can't. Sometimes it's a mistake. I make mistakes being myself as well. I feel this is a safe place for me too because wherever I am outside I can't. Claire isn't the only one finding the session hard. But he can't sing and he didn't want to let everybody down because he can't sing. And I'm trying to point out that he's letting people down by not trying. I think he should, even if he doesn't sing, he could still sit in the group and you know, join in a little bit. You had a quiet time. Now I think it's time you come and join. I'm not doing it. Why? Don't worry. And 11 year old Molly has spent the session behind the curtain. You don't like music? Everything's rubbish. Very difficult. I'm trying to assert authority. I'm trying to. Come on. You, you said you're going to join. You're not joining. And she just is in a. I don't want to. I don't want to. This is rubbish. This is rubbish. I don't want to. So I keep on just like. But then while you're here, and finally the only thing that she, she said is like, I'm only here because I want to be away from my house. Now, what's that? You got your and you got your. Which is a completely new thing. So you're going to shift, then you're going to let. If you haven't got many friends, your family are the only people you've got. I know how you feel, you're exactly like me. Hey, I, I get tormented a great deal at school. I've got a short fuse as well. So I know how you feel. Uh -oh. Thanks, Ben. Mum yeah. warned me that some people would be frightened, so I saw that coming. Believe me, I'm frightened. I'm frightened as well. Yeah, I know. All mums say something. Even my mum mom did. My mum said that all people would be frightened. I'm going to be... When it's performance, when it's for big time, when it's for performance, believe me, I'm going to be very, very scared that I wish that, that I've never been being, being picked. But you know what? We're so lucky that we've been being picked. <laughs> I know that it's over, but I've had a good time. Enjoy this, enjoy this session today. Yeah, yeah, enjoy it today. Mm -hmm. yeah. I feel with this kind of family.
Well done, guys. Never stop singing. I'll see you soon. <laughs> today. What? You took yourself out a little bit today, didn't you? Yeah. Why do you think that was? <sighs> was there something you didn't like? I just didn't like everything. <sighs> Did you have a stressful day, Molly? Yes. Is it because mummy's not been there a little bit? Mm. Yeah? Is it because mummy's a bit busy doing some other things? Yeah. Do you understand why I've been busy? Because I have been busy. Just doing the flowers for granddad's funeral. I know, but do you know why? Are you alright about that? No. Are you sad about that? Yeah. Yeah? Come on then, let's say, oh, you got that one again. Yeah, it's because I like it. Well, I think it's this one. No, oh, not that page again. No, no, I like this one. The cast have reached the end of their first week together. One sweet. Today they'll face their first real test, as they have to perform in front of an audience. But before that, normality. Breakfast, brushing. And for some, medication. Can you tell me what they're for, Ben? Behaviour. Sleep. Well, OK, Asperger's, in, in a few words, widens your imagination, so it widens your brain power, but it also severs your fantasy-reality bond severely. Get the picture? Um, and autism, that amplifies an emotion. Like for uh, Leah, uh, it, um, it seems to amplify happiness, because I've never seen him not smiling. For Andrew, it amplifies love, or obsession. Clara am amplifies uh, his kindness, as it, uh, it appears, or caringness. Molly am uh, amplifies either jealousy or stubbornness. That's an emotion. Um, or it's just being stubborn, or it's just her being stubborn. And for me, it amplifies my rage. Do you feel it when the rage comes in? When I full on lose it, I black out, okay? All I, I can see is darkness, but I can hear everything. And normally there's a big FUD and um, a lot of yelling and screaming and stop it, it's, and nose. Um, when, I, when I come to, when I get my vision back, and it turns out I've hit somebody through a chair across the room, the works. I don't like it when that happens. What about like when you get older? Do you think you're going to be? I think we're going to be in prison. Why? Well, that's what my dad keeps saying. Ben, if you keep up your temper, like if your temper keeps going up like this, then you're going to end up in prison. Those kind of those kind of thoughts really don't normally don't normally help. <laughs> It's the end of their first week together. And today, the cast will perform in front of a live audience for the first time. Their parents. Think about what we did Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all the activities, and we just want to recap and write them down. We're going to do it in pairs, you're going to help each other, and things as simple as, I've learned everyone's name. We uh, play games. We got to know each other. What do you think of that, Ben? Nice. Yeah. I've drawn a bear. Yeah. Yesterday we proposed. What would you feel if we do it in front of your parents? And some of them started saying, yeah, yeah. And then one kind of panic said, no way. And then the rest started falling like dominoes. Yeah, no way, no way, no way. And so what we said, we'll, 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 we'll see. We'll, we'll see, see how we'll how we, we'll feel it. If it's, if it's 
too too much, then we, we can rethink. I bit. still think we should do the sharing, because otherwise yeah. on the day of the performance we're going to have people saying, oh, no way, I'm not doing it. It's been a week of ups and downs for the cast. And all along, things have been witnessed by their parents. For some, it's the closest they've come to seeing their kids being independent. Most people won't take your child in autism for a couple of hours for starters, so, you know, it's quite great to have someone who will, um, especially when they're playing games and having fun, but I think, yeah, I mean, I'm not overprotective. I know I'm not, but I think I'm still still uncomfortable with somebody who isn't an expert having a child and that's really interesting to me because we do tend to kind of give a, a list of things to people and say my child will only do this and in a peculiar way that can inhibit them even though it's true it does still then inhibit them because we become part of the problem then almost facilitating or colluding with the ritualistic behavior and the and the real issues that they have, because we've got so used to those as experiences that we now collude in the, in the process, whether we mean to or not. And I think that um, the only way to get away from that is to have some trust, <laughs> faith, <laughs> that the non-expert, <laughs> you lot out there, frankly, will have this empathy and sensitivity to relate to them kindly on a human level. Please. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> so one of the things I ask, and it's up to you, it's up to you guys, if, if, if this thing we're going to show, if you mind if the parents come to see that. To We're going to share something that we were just working in the last 10 minutes. It's yeah. not a big show. Not a big deal it's not. I think it's worth showing it. Totally. Totally? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Let's bring more, shall we? Yeah. Ask them to come in. Please, just <laughs> relax. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to our little sharing. Put your hands like this, and when I count three, that will be your starting point. One, two, three. I'm Shady Addy. Got rich, don't give a toss. There's our trends, but I arrive. Let's be, you know, they get a bit of big crime, yeah. From the west to west, bro, the best. Put that rap down and came my gang, go out with bang. The ghetto, depot, ghetto, depot, ghetto, depot, ghetto, depot. Have you any wool? I can do it. Yes, sir. Three bags. That's not me doing that. <laughs> One for the day. Go Burger King. One for the little boy who <laughs> lived down. Game kiss. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. And we have a final one. Come on, Joseph. Ah, don't do that. Come on. Come on. Hard work. Is it 
it very hard. Yeah. Did you have fun though? That's the main thing. Did you have lots of fun making new friends? The production reaches the end of its first week. I enjoy everything. What is your friend over there? And nine individuals have become a family. The best bit was that I've made a lot of friends. I like just singing voice. O overall, everyone has had a positive experience of the of the week. They've formed a group, which is such a success. They're actually a functioning like a group, which I did I don't I didn't expect. <laughs> Now the directors will have to shape this family into a team of performers able to put on their very own show. There'll, there'll be a show. This but, was a show. Yeah. If you want, you know what I mean? There was no lies, and no, uh, but it was. There was an audience, there were some performers. This was a show. And they applauded at the and end. And they were so applauded at the end. So it's, it By depends on how. Definition. Yeah, the show. But, that um, we aim for <laughs> something higher than this? It is possible. It's possible. It's it just possible. dawned on you. It's possible. It is possible. Yeah. Next time. Oh my God. Oh. Is it biscuit time? The group have to come up with scenes and characters for the show. I'm not going to dance if you won't let me do my freestyle. My dance is Earth Monkey Hip Hop. Can they pull together? Yes! Clear! That's it! Fantastic! I can't do it, Alex. I can't do it, so I can't do it. Or will it fall apart? And I'm very proud of you. What is wrong in the world? There's way too much crime for me to be, for me to be afraid of. And, of course, the recession, of course. But you're under way too much poaching going on. For more information about autism, go to channel4.com and search for young, autistic and stage struck. I'm angry. I'm sick. Of, I'm sick of being social. Oh, oh, I just want everyone, that includes you, Molly, to leave me alone. Do all autistic children get angry? No. Some get uh, some get emotional. Some get really happy. <laughs> some get really sad. Some get really lovey dovey. <laughs> Oh, Heck, some may even uh, uh, get re really, 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 really confused. But for me, I got the short straw. I got anger. <laughs> this is the story of nine young people, all challenged by autism. Something inside of me has made my life, all, all my existence, horrible. They, with the help of two seasoned theatre directors, are trying to improve their lives. Do you want to be part of this? No. And achieve for them what could be the impossible. Oh my God! To write and perform in their own stage show. <laughs> and after just one week of rehearsals, Everyone involved is asking themselves the same question. A show? No. We might do something. A show? <laughs> but with three week-long workshops over just a few months, they will be taking to the stage, whether they're ready... Get out! Get out! ...or not. Do you think you've got autism? Yeah, I do have autism. What's it like? Uh, 
Um, um, it's hard being autism. What's hard about it? Because I'm always naughty. Eleven-year-old Molly was diagnosed with autism at the age of four. I, I like being autistic. Because mm -hmm. I get all this, like, stuff, TV, my toys. And I get, like, all this amazing Molly stuff. Buying presents for Molly is one of the ways her mum, Sabina, has been able to control her behaviour. Molly does come across a lot of the time as a naughty little spoiled little brat. And sometimes I think that myself. But she isn't. She's autistic. And at the end of the day, Molly is Molly. And people accept her for who she is or they can just take her on the jump. Don't hit your head on the side. Molly, you can't keep them all. I want them all. This one. Can I put this one away? No. Please. I want them all. You can't keep them all. Yes, I can. You can't. I want them all. <laughs> right, because you're not telling me I'm putting anyone in. No. As well as autism, Molly was also diagnosed with pathological demand avoidance, or PDA. It comes under the umbrella of autism and it basically Molly will do everything in her power to avoid doing something that she really doesn't want to do. Ow! Right. Come on, throw all my jellies down so I can just hit one right on your face. Yeah. Just you can just have them all. Go on, take them. Ow. Go on, take them. Right. Go on, take them all. I don't even need them. Right. Whatever mess you're making, you are cleaning up. Right. That's it. Enough. Ow. Right, well, I'm going down. You're going to have to tidy up the mess, Molly. Shut the f up! Come on, Molly, come on! Let me the little girl angry! The worst battle we've ever had was a four day long temper tantrum. She was biting herself, and we were then taught to restrain her, and we restrained her, and then she bit a chunk of the inside of her cheek out. And that's the only way she could hurt herself and she spat it out and her mouth just poured with blood. So it's like, there, that's what you have to weigh up. Do we let her get away with certain things or do you let her see herself harm? There isn't enough room in the I room. like them! I know you like them, but you're getting too big for them, Molly. I get them! Oh, 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 oh. Thank you, I, I want... don't want to die so I'll never see your face! That's not very nice. I want... If I could take Molly's disability away, I would. Tomorrow, right now, the second. If she could have a normal friendship and a normal schooling and have normal, a normal life, then I'd take it away right away and I'd let her live my life for me and I'd live her life for her right now. See you! You can't leave the house. Yes, I can! Them, please. No! I hate you! I hate everyone! In the house, please. No! Now. I'm not doing whatever you say. In the house. No! I have to get a so I cut me up! That's a bit ridiculous. Or maybe I should die, so I'll never see you! 
What, because of teddy bears? No, because I don't want to see you! You have always been a woman's mum! Have I? Yes! But I love you. Well, I don't like you! Well, I love you. Well, I don't like you for some reason! Yes, I wish that the world was different and autism wasn't in, in the world, but the whole reason for this is showing people that how difficult life is with having a sibling or a child or any relationship or friend that is diagnosed with autism to help them understand that they deserve life as much as everybody else in the world. <laughs> for Molly and the rest of the cast, Taking part in the project is about more than just putting on a show. I want to go in the front. Uh, Mike, is it okay if Leah sits in the front with you? She's not yeah. dangerous. Okay, cool. And as they all begin their second week together, there are signs that others in the group are also starting to benefit from the experience. Yeah. So, what do you think about this uh, trip to London then? It's very good. Yeah. What are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to, 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 to traveling there on the train. Oh, yes. Why do you like the train? Because I love it on the Northern Line. No, the, 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 That's why I love yeah. it. Yeah. Are you tired? No, no, no. I'm just busy thinking about how oh, I'm looking forward to seeing my, my new friend Claire oh, again. Oh, right. Yes. Oh, what, what, what are you looking forward to in that? Well, uh, I think she's wonderful. During the first week of the project, Claire and Andrew became close friends. By the first afternoon, I think she's very smart yeah. and very beautiful. Yeah. I think she's very pretty. Yeah. Okay, see ya. Since they were last together, Andrew and Claire have kept in touch by a text message. On the train going back to Liverpool, he had to make three different texts that day. And he was replying all the time, going back. But it's just not Andrew. He used, you know, a real first. We're really, really pleased. I'm really absolutely delighted for it. Love Andrew. Okay, you, you write what you want. You write what you think's right. Run! <laughs> Can we just walk normal? Please. Despite their burgeoning friendships, the group still have to create their show. And they only have three more workshops left in which to do it. A trained care team is on site to ensure the cast's welfare and they'll work with two top directors. I think we've got the group, they're starting to come together. At the end of the, the week, it felt really good that there was something happening in terms of a group forming. The objective of this week is to, is to generate ideas, content for the play. The directors, they are probably going to expect more of the children creatively and that might be a challenge if they'll be able to perform i still don't know in front of an audience and not freeze i don't know i don't want to scare you but i'm not sure what sort of show we're gonna have there is absolutely no way you could cure autism it is impossible because it makes people who they are. And if they were cured of it, you would have to wipe their brain, rewire it, put it back, and they'd have a totally different personality. It would be horrible. Hi, I'm Alexander, and I and and I like and I love in instruments like drums. Hi, I'm Nia. When I did the summer concerts, I played the tambourine. Oh. In just under three months. The thoughts and ideas generated in these sessions by this group of nine autistic youngsters will form the basis of a show, which they will perform in front of a large audience. What it needs to happen is that we need to create material, they need to come up with, with things, we need to open their imagination, we need to create stories. You know? Okay, very simple, someone is in the centre and strikes a pose, any pose, yeah? And someone will come in and Somebody make sense in. of this. And make sense of it. But that's easier said than done, because having autism can limit your ability to imagine anything beyond what is literally right in front of you. Nice. Yes. 
Andrew, what are they doing? You can look. You can Andrew look. is the most classically autistic member of the cast. Looks like they're standing over. Over something, yeah? Do you think there's something there? They're looking at... Are they... What are they doing? They're looking at the floor. And could there be something invisible on the floor? Um, I think there could be. Could, what could what it could be? be? Anything? I'm um, not sure. Not sure? Okay, anyone? Any other idea? Clear. What? A dead bird. A dead bird? A penny. A penny. Penny, move it, Mike. <laughs> the parents are able to watch what's going on from a room above the studio. I think they're having to use their imagination, which is really difficult for Andrew. He finds that really hard. And they're having to imagine what that pose is about, and he's struggling with that. But he is doing it, which is great, because he's trying. But I think he's finding it quite hard. I like that card. It's a very nice-looking one. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Very good. Happy birthday. Andrew's inability to imagine means he can only live in the present. He's unable to reflect on what has already happened and cannot plan for the future. He is, in effect, stuck. I like that. His ability to sort of to think ahead or to plan or to see risks or to potential of dangers or exploitation or the ability to read into things, all the things that ASD is all about, it all comes racing to the top then when you start seeing him in those situations and it just reminds you of how then impaired he actually really is and how this would present all sorts of difficulties for him. Andrew's celebrating his 17th birthday. It swears Wally. Oh. What do you think of those? Very good. I mean, 17, he should be having driving lessons for his 17th birthday on, you know, he, but he gets a trampoline, you know, and it's just, I'm not saying the trampoline's not a nice present, you know, it is, but it's just not the same. Maybe we should get a provisional license, see if we can get you one and try and teach but, you some things. But, but I can't drive, Mum. What about if we went on a big car park and tried to help you show how to, how to do it? No, no, Mum, I can't, Mum. I can't, Mum. I'm not old enough to drive. I'm too young. You're not. You're not. Mum. 17 now. Mum, I'm not old enough. You are. No, I'm not. Being able to drive a car means being able to think ahead and perceive danger. But that requires imaginative thought. And so for Andrew, it presents a real challenge. It's just very, very hard because you want to be able to, you know, I would love to be able to give him driving lessons for his birthday, just like Neil had, you know, and in six months' time, Andrew to be driving around, in a, you know, in a car, it would be, it would be wonderful. And it's never gonna happen. For Andrew, being back in the theater is not so much about putting on a show, as seeing his friend Claire again. And he surprised everyone by asking her to go out to the cinema. Yeah, you have, thank you. Show me where the cinema is, please, Claire. Yeah. Okay, so. Earlier on, I was, just before lunch, I was talking to him, and he said, I've spoke to Claire about the fantastic Mr. Fox, and we're going to watch it on the cinema. <laughs> so I'm saying, who's going to watch it on the Me and Claire are. What? Hmm? £20 there, so when you go to yeah. the pictures. You can say two tickets to see Fantastic Mr. Fox. Yeah. Now you'll get some change out of that. Up to this point in time, he's never been to the cinema with anyone, with the exception of his cousins, me and Jan. And the nearest I think he's come to go in on his own is with his brother Neil. So this is a completely different new phenomenon now. So uh, we're in uncharted territory here, so I don't really know what's going to happen. There's the book warehouse. Yes, yeah, bookstore. There's my, my children's <laughs> programmes on one of the books. Oh, excellent. Well, my pretty friend, we're at the Reach the Cinema. Come along, Claire. Go okay, two tickets for the cinema, please. Claire, what drink would you like? Drink? I'd like a Diet Coke, please. I'll get myself a Coca-Cola. 
some Skittles there. Uh, oh, there's some sweets over there. Do you want those or those? Which ones? You could try those ones. Over yeah, there. um, so... I like the cola bottles, me. Okay. I'll get a few of those. Yeah, those look good. I'll get a few of those. Is that it, then? Do you want the, it? I've got it. Okay, that's it, yeah? Yeah. We just need our drinks. Go ahead. Oh, I'm excited. Uh, excuse me, um, could I have uh, a Coca-Cola, please? Um, uh, that size. Shall I quickly go to the bathroom? Quickly, Andrew. Okay. Andrew's doing well. Um, taking it in stride, isn't he? Yeah, he's paying the money and you know, doing that kind of thing. Yeah, he's doing well. Let me just go and see if he got it right. I'm not going to interfere. Just, just leave him, John. I've got to the pound here. I've got one pound here. Okay, which, blue or yellow, which is mine? Yours. Excellent, because yellow's my favourite colour. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. We're going in. Okay, hurry, hurry, hurry. You see, they did fine, they really did. I mean, we just kept out of it, so I feel really, you know, that's really good. It's great to see them being able to just get on with it, so it's great. You know, in, in the bigger picture, this is like a small step, but it's a big step for Andrew, if, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Amazing being hanging out with Andrew. Was it nice? Oh, well, that's He's nice. a good friend to hang out with, yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Andrew! Thank you. Thank you. What do you want from Don's? I don't know, I'll see what there is. Yeah. We ask you to bring two objects, one for yourself and one for someone else. We're going to start with the object that you brought for yourself. Yes. You're going to invent a story about this object. This time it doesn't have to be true, it has to be invented. Has everybody got that? Yeah. yeah. Cinderella always wanted to go to the ball. The problem facing the directors is that without imagination, there will be no script, no characters, and ultimately, no show. And then suddenly, Tim heard what he must have never heard in uh, in Africa before: dancing. Ooh, doom, doom, doom. Mix them together. Boom, boom. Yeah, clap. You can work at it, but you can't. If somebody can't do something, if somebody's unable to do it because of the condition, it's. But still, it, I think you, imagination is something that can be opened. A little door might open. A little something might open. No? Am I...? <laughs> a clown was walking along with a fruit cake going, ah, ah, and so he fell over. Ah! Fortunately for the directors, as with all aspects of autism, a lack of imagination is not a problem for everyone. <laughs> Pretty girl was frolicking around the street going like that, and she found this hat. I mean, oh, this is a very pretty hat. I'll give it to my toy bear. <laughs> and so she brought it back, gave it to the toy bear. Twelve-year-old Jonathan was diagnosed with autism only 18 months ago. A clown. The trouble is, if you keep going to GPs and saying, there is something wrong with this child, and all they say is, oh, well, I think you've got postnatal depression. You're being a very overprotective mother. Paranoid. Over <laughs> You're an elderly mother, remember. You know, you're bound to have it. First like child. <laughs> First child syndrome, yeah. And, you know, eventually you think, oh, it's me. It's me. Well, he had like Do you think you've got autism? Ah. <laughs> That's confusing. Well, um, in some ways I do and in some ways I don't. I didn't even know what autism was. I had no idea. I think the only thing, as, as everybody had seen Rain Man, and I assumed that, you know, that's what autistics were, well, Jonathan wasn't, wasn't like that. So he hadn't got autism. Because of his late diagnosis, Jonathan's school has only ever seen him as an extremely bright pupil with problematic behaviour. I don't think the teachers kind of understand me. Uh, I've been suspended before because I got really, really confused and and then everything got really bad. I don't seem to be like other kids and I, I, I find it hard to make friends. 
everyone else seems to get along with each other well and I can't seem to do that that well and I don't know why. I just wish I could. After only a week of taking part in the project, however, Jonathan's mum has seen another side of her son. For the first time in my life, I've seen Jonathan playing with other children. I've seen him, I've seen him interact with other children. I've seen him, you know, be happy and, and be himself and not be frightened to be himself and be proud of being himself. And so, from the mum's point of view, that's just, I can't believe this is happening, it's just great. But on the other side, it means that I don't want him to be like like autistic children, you know, I want, I want him to be normal and I'm proud of him but you always, it's just this horrible tearing inside that you, you want, you're so pleased he's fitting in but equally it means that, that actually you can't deny it and you know, he, he is what they say he is and it won't ever change. Coping with the range of abilities within the cast is only one of the challenges still facing the production. You're a sailor, like the rest of us. Molly, cut the fish finger. Aye, aye, Captain. This is a If you're not going to play, you have to. You have to. Because of her condition, Molly has rarely taken part in any activity since the project began. You can carry on, Molly, the other side, so you can watch it. Okay. I'm not doing it from here. No, you watch it from the front. I don't want to watch from there. I want to watch from here. I don't. Is not what you want in this space, is it? Is it what we all say here? And they are playing. Look at them. I'm gonna give you another chance, and then you join us because we haven't finished with the comments, have we? Come the fish finger. In the midst of doing anything, we're thinking, what, what? What? Shall I have a word with her? Shall I leave her? Shall I let her go? Shall I let her sit? No, let's have a let's have a chat with her. No, that's not working. So it's never about. I'll just forget her. It's always about, no, you want to include her. And that, that does become exhausting. I don't want to join them because they're doing boring stuff, just walking around. all of her life she has a fear of failing I think yeah they, I think they all do I, and I think it, she would rather not do something than look stupid trying and looking like she's failed doing it and I have no re no understanding why she feels like that I don't want to go out why because I do you're because having a bad morning yeah I hate Monty I hate everyone why do you hate everyone because I do Monty wants you to join in and I don't want to join in though. I hate this stupid f***ing word. Uh, excuse me, we don't use that language at all, do we? <coughs> Stop biting yourself, it's silly. Uh, uh, enough. I want to see you because you've got a lovely face. Because <coughs> Mummy loves you even when you're cross. Mummy loves you all the time. Do you love Mummy all the time? Huh? Huh? I don't want to open my eyes. I just don't want to. I think we are scared of how to, how to approach these problems. And with some other groups, if someone doesn't want to be here repeatedly, you just say, there's no point because it's being destructive for the group. In this case, <clears throat> can't do that. Where do you see yourself being in five years' time? Well, first of all, like work. You own a house, money, bills, gas, all of that. This morning, 16-year-old Alexander is taking the tube to the Lyric Theatre. It'll be the first time he has ever travelled on the underground on his own. Busy, busy, busy. Busy, busy, busy. 
That's what I always hate about tubes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's, that's too much people. Look, look, there's so much people, 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 people right now that it's, that, it, that it's packed. So what I'm gonna do, do is how about we just wait up here? Alexander has been brought up single-handedly by his mother. And now he's 16, she's determined to give him more independence. Wrapping him up in cotton wool all the time, it, you know, in the long run, I will feel better, but that's not helping him because, you know, he's got to know how to survive without me. Oh, my gosh. Being a young black guy growing up in Britain, I think he's got a lot of things against him anyway. Yeah. I'm going to wait for the next one. But with the autism on top, I think it's just another burden that he has to carry. I think, um, and I'd rather he didn't. Wow. What's that, Alex? What did you say? I finally told my mum that I can't always be with, with you. I want to try and do, the, do these things by myself. Because I remember you once told me that one day you're not going to leave me anymore. Yes, please. Yes, I'd love to. And that'll give my mum some time. I don't know if I've um, honestly come to terms with it. Sometimes I think about the future and I just think, oh, gosh. And, but I just have to hold it together. I just have to. You know, because I don't know what the future's going to hold for him. I really don't know. As with many who have autistic children, Alexander's parents separated soon after he was diagnosed, and he's seen little of his father since. Well, the last time I saw him was on his 16th birthday this year. And before that? When I was eight years old. Oh, well, I like to ask him, what have, have you been doing all your, all, all, your, all your life? You've been so busy. I, I, I I'll say to him, you've been so busy these, so busy that you forgot your own son. Hmm? Uh, yes. It would, it would be, it would be really just stupid. So finally, I can do, I can do something but on my own. You like on your own? Yes. Yeah. You're always hungry. Yeah. I thought she was a growing girl. Mum, please tell me. Have you got um, any, uh, have you got a pound for a muffin today? A common condition associated with autism is pica. A compulsion to eat inedible substances or objects. Made her a castle bed and because her, it was specially made I ordered some uh, foam and when we moved to the next house I took like dismantled the bed and there was this big hole in the bed like this where she had to eat all of the, the foam. But we've also found AA batteries with no ends on the end and squished down and you couldn't eat. It was like, what on earth is that? And I had to then calculate what it was. Clothes, AA buttons. batteries. Yeah. Is that, is Dad's staircase away? Yeah. From the age of four till seven. And when he first had his peg, all that came out of him was wood and paint. Chewed the staircase away. Molly is exactly the same. Picker. Yeah. Molly, enough. Enough food. You've got to stop eating. Three days into the week, and so far precious little material has been generated for the show. And if anything, the disruptions are getting worse. Was there something about it in particular that reminded you of that? Joseph, well, nothing, oh, everything. Everything. Stop yeah. me. Was, was it the experience of hearing some music? <laughs> and it was very, it was very nice for me. It was very nice for me as well to to play some music for you and to, for you all to listen so well. Was I could very see well. you were getting tense because of this destruction. It's, it's something that we have to. Know, All as a team, we know. We're used to each other. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Hit the 
around of this like um cavern place. I, I really <laughs> They need to keep an eye on Joseph. I think Joseph is um, increasingly getting comfortable with the environment and the people around him. And he is really embracing this role of the Joker. He, w he has the ability and the knack to create extreme emotions in other people. I felt like I was being pulled into my own mind. Sure. I'm kind of used to that happening, but uh, it, this time it was strange. This time it was actually quite scary. It's scary. I'd appreciate it if you didn't do that again. So it makes you feel bigger again. Where's your dad? Where's your dad? Where's your dad? Sometimes you might say it for ages, and then you'll have a phase where that's all that's in his eyes, but he's getting a reaction. See, so I tend to ignore it a little bit. But when it starts escalating a little bit too much, because they've had it in school and everything. I mean, it's been. I don't know how. You know, they've sorted it with all the children around him. He's done that in f as well if they got. Yeah, what's he doing? Just go like that. Part of Joseph's autism is echolalia, which means he repeats or echoes random phrases he hears incessantly. Because the, the doctor said to me on diagnosis day, she says to me, Have you ever heard anyone speaking French? And I says, yeah, she says, do you understand French? She says, but you know a little bit of French, don't you? The key words. She says, well, that's what it's like for Joseph. <laughs> so we don't keep plugs on there. F we have to hide and touch say, no, we don't do that. Get out, come on. Being daft. Being daft. He picks bits up, like you do if you use someone to speak French, you pick certain words up. Yeah. But he doesn't get the whole meaning. Try not to worry, but you're thinking. Where's it going to end up? And you know, I don't really want him in a special school, but I've tried a mainstream seven weeks. <laughs> Couldn't have him more than an hour, you know, because I didn't know how to cope. There's no expertise. So, just look to. Just suppose I'll have to be there for him, won't I? Up the what, what have you been doing that's not nice? Spit. I think you said you've been swearing, haven't you? Been swearing. No swearing. Naughty boy. No, you're not naughty. Right? There's just no swearing, then you can be God, can't you? No. In the rehearsal room, things have ground to a halt yet again. With so little time left to generate ideas, Monsi is beginning to lose her patience. Molly. I'm going. Molly, this is not yours. Mine? Um, no, it's not. I brought it into this space. It belongs to everybody. It doesn't belong to you. So I want it back. It's mine. No, no, listen to me. You break it and we have a problem. I'm serious now. I'm absolutely serious. Molly. 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 Uh, Claire, you break it, to you're not me coming now. into this space again. I'm serious. Do you want to be part of this? No. Molly, why are you being so difficult today? Um, because this place is rubbish. This is mine, for starters. You're breaking it because I said it's mine. That's why you're breaking it. That's the most selfish thing ever. Shall I take your things and break them? Oops. Okay, let's find them. Can everybody point at Alexander, the eyes closed? Where is Alexander? Eyes closed, where is Alexander? Say. Okay, Andrew, make a decision, no peeking. No East! Okay, everybody take a nice breath in. Run! A drama therapist with experience in working with people with autism is on hand at all times. You need to pick your battles. I've run there only I because I know I said be strict. I know I said be strict, but you don't want to lose her. So.
you it really is. need to use the group to your advantage because otherwise you're doing it you're fighting the battle all by yourself and it's you and um molly just you and molly and you're not gonna win once <laughs> you are know. definitely not gonna win <laughs> uh, um, I going on with my turn. when molly decides to stop something he'll carry on even when Molly is back in the group, her disruptions continue to prevent any progress being made. And Monsi is no longer the only one who's finding it a challenge. I just need this moment. Do we all need a bit of a... I do need a bit of breathing time and less noise. Because I'm going absolutely... Oh, fine. Yeah, I am. That's it. I'll get it. Thank you. Leah, you understand me, don't I you? Know, yes. <laughs> if you don't want to join us, that's fine. But you have to allow Ben to join us. <laughs> this is so awkward. Ben, I know. Somebody has to stop them. I'm trying. Come on. In all their 10 years of experience working with and helping underprivileged young people, the directors have never dealt with any group like this before. Some of the younger members of the group just make it really, really tiring. Um, th their behaviour and managing their behaviour is, is, I feel it's, it's really um, d distracting us and, and really detracting from how we, what, what we're trying to achieve. I want to go home, go on my laptop. Molly, could you please sit with the others, because we have still one scene to go. My concern as a therapist is, obviously you are really working hard with other people's abilities or inabilities. I still, at what cost, from my worry is at what cost, because obviously my concern is that it still enhances their confidence and is therapeutic and is enjoyable, and it doesn't become gruelling and it doesn't, push so many of their wounds that they make right, that it yeah. makes them feel yeah. bad and it makes them realize what they can't do more than what they can and we want to be pushing things that we don't want to push how can we know we're not pushing the wrong button mm. with the wrong buttons you know what i mean because we don't know we can only work with what we know but some some of these kids can only be in the moment yeah. like molly if she doesn't like it and it's not a good experience she's out because even thinking about the future requires the imagination and some of these kids completely in the moment. If they're not enjoying the moment, they're out. I mean, all the things that I think, thought I knew, I don't know anymore. What do you hope might happen in the future? Flying cars. That sounds great. Is there anything else? No, oh, that's it. Mom, Can I have them? Mom, please. Andrew, you've worn these all week, so you need a clean pair. I don't need another clean pair. Well, Let do you me stick to that one, please. Do you want people, do you want people or Claire to say, I'm not sitting next to you because you smell? You're right, knock in the morning sometimes, you. No, he's just having a change of yeah. clothes. It's approaching the end of the second workshop. Fasten your button. And after the challenges of the past few days, the directors have decided on a different tack. In terms of the, the, the kind of behavioural difficulties, it's, it's using the work itself to control them. Because when they're, when they're engaged, they're engaged. You don't, it's, it's kind of effortless. Well, not effortless, but it takes a lot le less effort than, than um, trying to get them to, 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 to behave. And, and, and all that is about then is just focusing, focusing them. And to start to give them that focus, the cast have been taken on a tour of the theatre to find out what it's like to actually stand on a stage. What we yeah. do in that room downstairs, which sometimes could feel like any room, like a classroom, mm. to put that into context, here we are, this is the space you're doing it in, this is what you'll look like, there's going to be audience sitting here, they'll be watching you, there'll be a guy in the lighting box, there'll be lights. Oh man, this is like a nightmare right here. <laughs> Oh. Let yourself look presentable, Molly. Oh. Oh my, my God. God. Oh. Hey, <laughs> Dave. That's the. Look at it. Come on. Okay. 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 Okay
Still quite famous, actually. Well, it's amazing. Well, it's amazing. Well, it's amazing. Being on stage has made the show a reality for the whole cast. How long do you think you have to speak to be able to reach that people up there? Hello, up there! <laughs> And seeing their reaction has convinced the directors they're ready to move on to the next stage. I'm going to try me now. Just choose something you like. You're going to use that one? They've asked the cast to choose costumes and props in the hope that it will fire their imaginations and help create some much needed scenes for the show. Drama, people don't use props because they think that that invades the nat natural imagination but with autism it's the other way around in order to engage the imag imagination you need something yeah. concrete one two three I forget ah, ah. I was having a shower <laughs> I grant you three wishes three wishes I wish for a towel <laughs> It seems the simple introduction of costumes and props has made all the difference. And at last, the group are taking their first tentative steps towards creating their show. He has something to say to you. Maybe it's a volunteer. I can really expert on earth monkeys. It would honor me to help you on your quest. Very good, everybody. We're going to do it one last time. Are we going to make it better? Yes, we are! Because you see, with little details, we're already making it better. 10 out of 10 of that. It's the first time ever that we applied theatrical devices to the whole thing. And I like very much. But for the first time, we started using the term repetition and direction. And, you know, and for the first time, they didn't say, oh, I don't want to do it. Yes, clear! That's it! Fantastic! <laughs> they did proper rehearsals, rehearsing for a show, um, rather than it being a context of a game or an activity or an exercise. I heard you've got a, a bit of a, le a leg problem. May I check your heart to see if it's still running? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> I broke my leg trying to break my arm. And so having costumes, um, having the characters, they, they're more engaged and they, they don't work so well with the abstract sort of loose wooliness of, of inventing. I like when did it... Ah, oh, ah! Oh, oh, is there a problem with your hair? Yes, you fell off the chair! Today has been a brilliant day for me. Fantastic. Would, yeah, everything. Excellent. the end of the beginning uh, it's the end of the beginning um, but uh, um, there's still a lot, lot of stuff to do today I think they got a lot out of it and they, they enjoyed it but you don't want them to get a, a, a false sense of what they achieved because it's, what we want is so much more than this Woo! it feels like there's still battles ahead there's still a big journey to go Mommy, Alex. how was your day? <gasps> really, really amazing. Really, really amazing. Give me five. Next time. So you, this is your, this is your own, yeah. Mr. Man. You've made up. The cast begin to work on their script. Joseph likes going down the allotment. Got no sherbet. But there's no sherbet down the allotment. And rehearsals begin in earnest. <laughs> no, same action. Go back. New friendships are tested. as the pressure to perform intensifies. I'm not going to dance if you won't let me do my freestyle. Yes. You pooed. Yes. Have you? Do you need? Yeah. Do you need? Oh, my God! What's the worst thing that can happen to Tom? <laughs> for more information about autism, go to the website channel4.com and search for Young, Autistic and Stage Struck. 8 o'clock tomorrow night, Channel 4. Big versus small, huge versus tiny, super size versus super skinny. Next tonight, a fantastic insight into life on the home front, a recreation 
of the Blitz. What's the difference between a JCB and a giraffe? What? I don't know. What's the difference between a JCB and a giraffe? One's got, got hydraulics, the other one's got high bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> This is the story of nine young people, all challenged by autism. Well, I just want this to be treated really normal, treated proper like a young, like a young man, not like this. With the help of two theatre professionals. Yes, clear, that's it, fantastic. They are ambitiously attempting to write and perform in their very own stage show. I bet you can't cope with this one. <laughs> The play is absolutely doomed. So far, the cast have had two week-long workshops. Show off! Getting to know each other. You want me in a nutshell. Hate my life, want to kill myself, and negative personality. This is so awkward. Ba ba ba. Getting to perform. <laughs> and coming up with ideas. African voodoo priest. <laughs> But this week, the real work kicks off. Xander, you go first. As they begin to try and create their show. The word impossible did come into my head today. <laughs> we're taking big, big risks here. My God, are we going to pull it off? Red lights! Oh, no, no, red lights! No, red lights, no! Get off! Cheese on toast. Yes, soon. Cheese! Soon! 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 Wife! Wife! Good morning, wife! On to poo! On to poo! Over the last couple of months, the cast have had two week-long rehearsal workshops. Now it's time for workshop number three. Good. Oh. Very good. Oh, that's hard. Mum's coming. Uh, don't put your hands here. We're just here. rotating go. very that's slowly. Good. good, Joseph. Good. Very slowly. Oh my gosh. <laughs> very good. First week we were calling it exploring, and we was like knowing them, them knowing us. Second week, we were trying to get material out of them. But this week is the beginning of a rehearsal process, in a way. What we're going to be doing is a lot of focused work. We're going to be working together towards a show. This week is script week. Little Miss Molly! The challenge is to assemble all the thoughts and ideas of the entire cast. Okay. They'll also start writing the show and begin rehearsing it. Joseph likes going down the allotment. Yeah. Got no sherbet. But there's no sherbet down the allotment, but um, maybe can do something about nice. that. But getting these nine autistic individuals to accept each other's ideas is not going to be easy. The little mask that Andrew did, I love it so much. That I would like, a, there will be a moment during the play that you're gonna all have one with your own personality and do a little Mr. Man dance. Don't put that face. What's your name? No, Josie Beckerton. Mum's coming. <laughs> Eleven-year-old Joseph from Stoke-on-Trent is the most autistic member of the cast. <laughs> and as such, <laughs> presents the biggest challenge for the group. <laughs> he has the ability and the knack to create extreme emotions in other people. Just trying to keep away from Joseph. Okay. He's annoying me. <laughs> Be good boy. I'm good Be boy. Be good boy. <laughs> After two weeks together, Joseph is now far more relaxed. 
<laughs> As a result, his behaviour has become particularly problematic. Do you get to tell the story? <laughs> you pooed. No, we have you. Do you need? Yeah. Do you need? Yeah. A trained care team is on hand to ensure the cast's welfare. As horrifying as this is for the cast, for Joe it's actually a positive sign. I think we need to get out for a second. I need it. Come on. Jonathan, everyone, just follow us for five minutes. Can I dig table? Come on. That's just all he has. I don't think I want to see. Wait, can I sleep it out? This is his. Uh, Drink, he's supposed to drink. He has two sachets in, in the morning. What's that drink for? This is just constipation. <sighs> like most with autism, Joe suffers from extreme anxiety. In his case, this results in chronic constipation. He used to be able to go to respite with this medication when he was about six and still hold on to it. He used to come home, hold on to his stools, he used to come home, as soon as he got home, it'd, he'd be dancing in it. Yeah, he'd be absolutely covered in it. Even with the medicine. He wore nappies till he was nine. Yeah. It's a nice baby, Come on, Joe, come do your peg, mate. Come do your clamp. This clamp has to be undone. For the last five years, Joe has been given his medication via a peg. A line straight into his stomach. To deal with his constitution, he can take up to 12 adult strength laxative sachets a day. But since taking part in the show, he's not needed quite so many. Good news for Joe, but a mixed bag for the rest of the cast. What's the worst? thing that can happen to Don <laughs> Joseph cannot really play a part, can he? Yes. I, I, can't, I, don't have, I don't have very high thoughts and hopes for somebody who poos himself. We all have problems. Sometimes you don't feel well. And, and you know, come here, Ben. Let's talk about this. Ben, because I'm going to need your help. You have to help. Because you know, we know that we all are different, at different levels. And Joe has problems communicating to the exterior what he feels. I was like, poo yuck, when it went to me home. And he went. said that? Yeah. So he said poo. So if he says poo, I mean, come on. Okay, that's fine, you did this last time. Soon, this autistic cast will step out to perform their very own stage show. <laughs> the contents will come from them. Uh, I'd like to be made in Mr. Uh, Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde, or one of the characters I've invented, or a few of the characters I've invented him. Because if anything, I'd like to have one or two roles. Well, I've created a young teenage boy who is also homosexual. I kept imagining him visiting this world and causing all kinds of um, trouble. I would like to play um, a... I don't know. <laughs> By the end of the week, they need a complete script to begin rehearsing from. Claire, here. So the cast are creating scenes for the show. You're going to be the last one to come in because you're going to have everybody being monkeys. OK? Like Claire's Earth Monkey Dance. Bum, bum, bum. 
Listen to the music, Alex. Is it rough? It's not rough. Listen, what else can we dance? Find something. You're a monkey. You're an earth monkey. Nice. Very good, Molly. Very good. Earth monkey. Very nice, Alex. Ooh. Oh, God. Because I told him it was not rough. At 20, Alex Adeyi is the oldest member of the cast. Part of his autism is a profound obsession with rap and hip-hop. My freestyle is hip-hop style. Yeah. I'm not going to dance if she won't let me do my freestyle. Sure. I'd just rather stay out here. Okay. So it feels like she gave wrong messages? Wrong messages to me. It hurt me deep inside. Sure. Off. Yeah, I can see that. My dance is Earth Monkey Hip Hop. Yeah. I'm gonna be doing the rap of the US, the US ghetto. Alex lives in London. Okay. Three, two, ghetto. Yeah. With his parents Esther and Michael. My paper is later. My victory is dictatorship. <laughs> I just have to say any word for that. And my cheddar is forever. Yeah, the ghetto. Yeah, the ghetto. Get down. He has obsessions with lawnmowers, hoovers, crocodiles. At the moment, it is rappers and, and, and black culture. Hang on a minute, that's the wrong area. Yay! 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 First time I ever found that I rap, I, I thought I sounded like I was like a, like I'm black. Because many rappers are black when you rap. Absolutely fascinated with colours. Has been from from quite a young age, and and very very interesting people's skin tone. So we, we like to kind of work out the percentage of of different people's skin tones. What are these? Different skin tones. Did you paint these? I did, yes. I did them to show all the different people I've seen with different skin backgrounds. Well, that's, that's the darkest, normally, normally that skin tone you see in Ugandans. Hi, I'm Marvin, the blackest man in Africa. <laughs> and those, this, these uh, three over there are the average uh, skin tone of a black man like 80, like my dad is. And all these rests are African Americans, how, uh, how they got lighter beca because of the cold in America. The attendance is 50, I'm 50 cent. Do you knit? What's this very pink one over there? That's of a, a very, very tanned British. And that's a fairly tanned British. That is a golden tanned British. That is a normal skin to skin tone British. And that is a mixed skin tone like mine. Wow. Are you proud of your collection? I am. I'm proud and my next population will be the Asians. I'm gonna be moving on to. I haven't put enough Asians here. <laughs> Obsessions in autism are commonplace. And with Alex, any challenge to his obsessions... It hurts me deep inside. Sure. ...always ends the same way. It's like a spark. It makes me feel upset and, and about con the confusement. And it makes me feel... It's making me feel weak inside. It's me. It is a freestyle in the sense that everyone can express themselves in this monkey dance. This might be not the moment for rap, try something else. That was my second instruction. So the first instruction was everyone freestyling. You did, you did great. You did the rap, which is what you want wanting to express. Good. Sometimes it's very hard. I mean, I'm not just gonna say this is easy. Okay? Yeah. Good. I'm not gonna say that we are mastering and that they are lovely. There are some moments that we want to kill them. I shouldn't say that in camera. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? Sometimes you're just like desperate because you want to get on with things. And there's always sabotaging on one, with, without one thing. And you, 
you have to really... It's dealing with your own frustrations, which exactly. is the thing, and it's, yeah. it's um, uh, um, learning how to manage that and, and not let that become a negative thing in the room. Hmm. Not one thing to change them as well. We want to challenge them, challenge them, but still they're going to be who they are and what they are. But taking part in the project is helping some of the cast adapt their behaviour. Now, when the music comes on, follow me, okay? Since Joe's incident in the workshop... Who's coming? Yeah, in a minute. 12-year-old Jonathan <laughs> has taken him under his wing. It's actually really nice to um, help him because it, it just makes you feel nice. I've always thought I was the weird person and I always thought that um, it was my fault I was um, like a little weird because no one accepts me for who I am at school and stuff like that. So do you sort of feel like you found a place where you belong? Yeah, I guess. Do you think your confidence is growing? A lot. And so is my mum's. I, I've noticed that. She's been a lot happier and she's been a lot more self-confident. And that makes me feel nice because I know my mum struggles with things. Yeah, everything always gets on top of her. And she always goes, oh, I can't cope with this. But, but um, lately she's a lot better. Like the other parents, Jonathan's mum Sue has been following the goings on. Jonathan was only recently diagnosed. So the project is Sue's first opportunity to spend time with other parents of autistic children. I know now that when he's hurtling around, you know, I, I, I can accept that. Whereas if it was anybody else or anybody else's parents, You're you know, I'd be constantly, guard. oh my God, I'm sorry, I'm terribly sorry, I'm Jonathan Cover. No, no, I'm awfully sorry, I'm Jonathan Cover. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it's exhausting. And so eventually you think, I, I'm just not going out. Yeah. <laughs> it's too much I, trouble. I, do you know what? I've lived my life apologising for Molly yeah. and I've now realised I'm not going to do that because no. why should I apologise for her? She yeah. does nothing wrong. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, I, I can count the things. times when, even from when sort of he was quite small, you know, I've had people come up to me, women, Come up to me. I could almost take if it was men, but when women come up to you and start saying, "Can't you do anything with that child? Can't you shut him up? You know, don't you see that he's creating havoc? You know, and you've sort of felt like saying, "Well, you see if you can do any better." I mean, I, I've had that day in, day out all of our life since Molly was a baby, and that's why a lot of autistic families become recluse and stay yeah. indoors. Yeah, absolutely. All the time. Because why would you want to put yourself through that? I don't think people realise the pressure. It's phenomenal. Not, Autistic people and children can have on a relationship. Mm. It, it is very difficult. It mm. is very, very hard to, to, to cope with. Sabina's daughter, Molly, has been the most reluctant cast member. I think she needs a little bit of a persuasion. If Molly's on the gold, then we'll... She has, however, made one significant breakthrough. Just walk normal. Her friendship with 12 year old Ben. You, ben. Ah! It's the first time she's ever had a proper friend. I get tormented a great deal at school. Each, we I've got a short fuse as well. So I know how you feel. Uh -oh. Thanks, Ben. Kiss my bum. <laughs> <laughs> but some people with autism are oversensitive and struggle with friendships. Following a play fight, Molly has said to Ben that his dad doesn't exist. Ben. 
Oh, yes, it just... Stay here with us. She's driven me off the edge. I couldn't take any more. Right. Well, first of all, she's never met your dad, so... She's insulted his existence. Yeah, well, she's never met him. She, all she's saying I... is she doesn't... She's never no, met No, she's him. saying he doesn't exist. Well, until I she meets have, him... I would have strung her over the mantelpiece for doing that. Oh, well, he's going to be here for the last few days of the next session, so she'll get to meet him, so she'll know he exists then, won't she? It's been really sad through the years. And he either has one friend who he fixates on, and this is his best friend in the world, and then this best friend will upset him in some way, and that's it. They're his enemy forever. But if she winds me up at one more time, I'm going to. Well, I'm, I'm not suggest... lying. I'm not going to get any chapter on me. I'm going. If, if anyone comes near me, then I will punch them. I know. I'm going to kill not. her. No, you will not. My my anger uh, is incredibly cruel at times. It has no concept of love, kindness, forgiveness. No concept of them. That's how cruel my anger can be. Do you mind that, that, that you're cruel? Oh, I don't. Leave it. I, hey, I gotta. Hey, I may, may be very sneaky, conniving, and, and dangerous on the outside. Inside, I got a heart of gold. 25 carats. No, no. it's <laughs> He has actually got a girlfriend. He won't want to talk about it, but uh, he has got a girlfriend. This is Anya. Hi. This is Ben. <laughs> this is Bannister. This is life. <laughs> this is death. <laughs> to be or not to be. Will you tell us about you? Where did you two meet each other first? School. Yeah, we were, we became study buddies in year seven. Yeah, because everyone has a partner who they have to yeah. work with. I told Anya about uh, 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 please not to please not to tease me and stuff because I had a horrible past, which I had. She made the veil not to. Ooh. What is it that you two like about each other? Well, Andy's beautiful, pretty, mm. a, a funny, smart. You're funny. I like that. I like funny. Yeah. So how long have you two been? Nearly, nearly a year. Twenty-second of October. Yeah, I thought it was. Go on, Ben. Oh. What? What do you think he's like as boyfriend material? <laughs> Don't try to walk. Don't try to walk. I don't know. So I, I don't think I could put up with this. <laughs> I thought you'd be good at this, but I was right. Do you think Ben's autism makes your relationship difficult or different? In it can. Way? It can make it difficult sometimes because you know if it's hard to like not annoy him sometimes. You know, because if it takes things like more than some people would, you have to be careful what you say sometimes. But I don't mind that. And then I'm just going to go for it, okay? All right, then. So I thought, has she ever seen you lose your temper? Uh, one, the one time. Do you hold it back when you're with us? I try to, I try to um, retain my, all my anger. Try to turn it into love. My biggest worry is, is whether he can move from being a friend to being like more intimate relationships because of feelings. But yeah, it's a good start. <laughs> Oh, 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 sorry! Oh, God, so you can conquer your kind of temper if you have to. Yes, but only if I have to. Please tell me that's the end of the dumb questions. One more thing. Mm -hmm. ben, ben, yes. do you love Anya? Yes, of course I do. I, I love her uh, a lot. Let's go back in there with positive thoughts, yeah? You're talking to me. What, yeah, what, well, what do you want about? Come on, come on. The word positive, there's half not much my list for, for a year or so. Ben, there's half an hour left. Come on. So you say, so you're telling me that you do not know what happened to Ben while, while he kicked off. It's been 20 minutes since Ben and Molly fell out. He just doesn't like me. How do you know? How can you tell that he doesn't like you? I knew this would happen. I knew it would be a problem. We need Ben. Ah, that's his. Are you ready? We need that, actually. Oh. Well, not yet. All right, here we go, guys. Okay, get into your position, whatever it was. You, you, you were go, hiding. Go, I'm sorry. Go to hide. Go anywhere. No, I got, yeah, I got a nickname for you, by the way. Yes, this is more than you. No, actually, it's more or less B I H. You are in the monkey dance now, Molly. Yes. Monkey dance. This is incredible. <laughs> Thank you.
soon this autistic cast want to spit. Give me kids. will be performing their very own show. Despite some interruptions, the cast has spent the last couple of days working out scenes for the show. Step and step and look. Step, step and look and come forward to... They've also nailed a couple of songs. Friends, you've made such a lot. You're the only ones of God. And even a rap for Alex. I run the streets with peace. It's bless. I bless the streets. Oh, bless. Yeah. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Finally, a writer, Toby, is working full time with the cast. So you, this is your, this is your own, yeah. Mr. Man that you've made yeah. up. Yeah. He's good, I imagine. To crystallise their ideas. So, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand out a mini script. There's just three lines on it. And get them ready to learn their lines. Can you say lunchtime? Lunchtime. Yes. Good. Yes, very okay. good. So we're going to do a play, think, think, Joseph, you, think, you and I. You think a scene? You're going to and I'm going to say, where could it happen? what time is it? Court time. No, you're going to say lunchtime. Okay? Please call me. What time is it? Court time. Lunchtime. Where's daddy? Daddy? No, it's not daddy. It's lunchtime. Okay? Shall we try that? Yeah. I say, what time is it? Lunch time. Yes! Very good, Joseph. Okay, and where are we? Let's put it... Shall we... Most of the cast will find working with the script an enormous challenge. Where do you think this scene could, could take place? Could it take place in the theatre? In the theatre. That's when you act it. But he's saying, imaginatively, it's going to be in the streets. What do you think about that? But learning to perform is something they're all used to. In their everyday lives, each of them are taught behavioural techniques to help manage their autism. Now, some other object is what we were talking about today. Are you tired again? <sighs> Andrew's dad, Bill, Second one. has been using behavioural techniques for the past ten years. And how do we listen? Through our ears, With that's our right. Ears. Yeah. So, if... Monty was talking, say mum's Monty, and she's talking away, and I'm like that. Do you think I'm listening carefully? I think you better look at it very that's carefully. That's right, that's, that's a good idea, see. Once a day, Bill sits down with Andrew, often repeating the same directions dozens of times. We'll run over these again a bunch of time, if you like. But even with all this effort, there's no guarantees of any breakthroughs. You see, like a battle, but... Uh or a challenge, or whatever you want to call it. It's, it's, uh, uh, I, just, I just think the end result will be either I go or he gets his independence. You know, so uh, in, in blunt terms, you know, that's, that's sort of how it will go. You know, sort of, uh, and, on, and we'll keep working until we can get as much of that potential realised as possible. Of all the cast, 20-year-old Claire has gone through this kind of training the longest. Does anybody want wine? With the help of her mum, Natalia, she's developed techniques to overcome most of her autistic behaviours. So it's like I'm disabled on the inside, but on the outside I'm normal. No one knows it. It's like I, I can go out without a disguise. And when you talk about getting away with things... Mm -hmm. um, what sort of stuff would you like to be able to get away with? Well, sometimes I do speak to myself. I mean, someone at college caught me speaking to myself. I was so embarrassed. Claire is very fragile. She's more fragile than I thought she would be. And I think my main concern would be that um, she doesn't actually develop a mental illness out of all this. It's uh, apparently very common for people who do well, well in America they have more of a sort of system of uh, 
helping autistic people achieve their potential and actually adults uh, with autism who have done very well if they are um, examined by someone who doesn't know their history they are quite likely to be diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder for instance uh, or an anxiety disorder or depression or something like that almost as their primary diagnosis um, because they've overcome their autism but that is what is left behind this is what it's sort of the last um, frontier if you like worrying about mistakes in things like shutting doors or drinking a cup of tea or washing your hands the simplest things do you understand how there's no right way of shutting a door yeah but if something in your head tells you oh I didn't shut the door right I didn't pick up my biscuit in the correct way I didn't put my shoes on in the right way you know just didn't tie the laces in the correct order then it's an obsessive thought yeah and that we need to look at as such as an obsessive thought Maybe all my life I've been thinking that because people took the mickey out of me when I did it. But then, you know, you have to almost be strong inside. You have to, yeah. even if people say, oh, Claire, look, you dropped the ball, you have to be able to say to yourself inside, it doesn't make me an idiot, it doesn't make me a worthless person, I'm fine. If we didn't tackle the behaviours, we would have become, to some extent, prisoners of the autism. I would be happy for Claire if she uh, was in a good relationship, in a stable relationship, was happily married, and uh, had a job that she found fulfilling. Um, yeah. And how, how far away do you think all of that is? About 15 years. Oh, Dave, we're not going to Weatherspoons, we're going to a different pub in Hammersmith. It's called, what's it called again? The Dartmouth Castle. The Dartmouth Castle. Do you know that one? To build her independence, Claire has recently started having nights out. Okay. She has a small group of friends. All are autistic. Oh, well. Hakuna Matata. <laughs> If people want to be in a relationship, I think autism should be versus autism. But it actually works. Like if you can have autism versus non-autism, you might not have something in common. So you have to go out with someone who's got autism. I would surely think that, yes. I think that like, if, if someone with autism goes to someone who doesn't have autism, things may get a bit complicated. I want to be able to because I get because, I, because I'm autism I get very stressed. I find I wouldn't, I wouldn't really I don't really want to have children. I find if I was going to be relationship I'd be happy in relationship. I don't really want to have children. No, I don't really want to. Why would you say that? The team have spent the last four days devising and writing. And now, the directors finally have a script to work with. If each performer has their own claims, it's like their own individual stage. The show is called Adventures Inside. We know that these kids live their own story, their own stage. And there's been a, a, a journey, so they're starting off as individuals. They're starting off as individuals. Work. And we were saying that towards the end, you know, when we sang the last song, it will be nice that they move from this, they all end up in the big one. Yeah, yeah, mm. The writer Toby has managed to combine the many and varied scenes and songs from the cast by setting the show in one place, inside the mind of a person with autism. And that person... He was upstairs, he was. He says, oh, there's nothing you can get, Mum, there's nothing up there. It's Joseph. And I go upstairs and there he is, standing in the window in the buff like this, you know. <laughs> I said, there is something up there that he will find. Sometimes the eyes is closed, you know. Because <laughs> he doesn't like wearing Yeah, if he sees, like, washing on the side with school clothes on and it's the weekend, he'll go stash them somewhere and he'll look, you know, everywhere for them. 
What's it? What's it meant to you and to Joe the last? Happy. Week? I'm. I'm so happy. It's because Joseph's come on loads. All of a sudden, he's having a spurt of understanding the world, understanding. You know what people are saying to him, taking part in a group. And I just want him to keep this level of happiness, you know. So we're I mean, just we're just happy. And you're looking forward to the next week. Yeah. It's gonna be exciting that one is. <laughs> but the prospect of the final stage is not being relished by everyone. Can we go? Mom. We're going to the lyric now, Molly. No, Can I have a foot? Oh! There, there's my boy. My boy. Shoot. Hello, foot. Morning, Molly. No, I'm not getting up. Right. Out of bed now. Mm. Come on, Molly. No. Come on, Molly loves you lots. No, I'm not going. My door's shut, Molly. Oh, no. Where are you going now? Now. Well, why are you going? Hi, Molly. Right. No, I am not. Why? Why are you not right? Just not. Fair enough. You can't just be angry. There must be a reason why you're angry. Don't want to go back home. No. Is that what you're upset about? That you're going to miss everybody? Would you like a hug? No. Huh? No, I don't. Because I don't like my own mum. Why don't you like me? I just don't. Mummy, mummy would love a hug. Don't wanna hug. Oh, please. Don't wanna hug. Come on, there's a good girl.
This is a huge deal for all these kids, absolutely huge. The experience has been so fulfilling on so many dimensions of their life. So it's not just that, you know, they're going to be putting on a play and that, that they'll be there, people watching, they've got the costumes. But there's another um, story going on parallel, and that is, this is coming to an end. This is the script. If at any point, guys, during the read-through, we're not following, there's something we don't understand, so on and so forth, put your hand up and say stop, and we can go back, okay? I don't want anyone feeling confused or lost when we do this read-through, okay? So far in the project, the directors have used fun and games to get performances out of the cast. But now comes the acid test. Can this group learn to perform from a script? There are certain things that we're not going to take risks with. For instance, we've proven that Joseph has improved a lot in many ways, but not an actor. He doesn't even know what he's doing half of the time. For instance, on the last performance, his line was, where is mommy? And he ended up saying, I want a burger. <laughs> where did that come from? He never said that before. <laughs> Day five. Today, the cast will rehearse from the script for the first time. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Children, hi, how are you? Teenagers, what's happening, guys? Eh, bro? To help the group focus, the directors have arranged for them to sit in with a professional cast of actors who are also working at the Lyric as they go through the final stages of rehearsal. I think it's important that they see how other people behave in a rehearsal room. Let's price him. <laughs> Do you have any advice to give? these guys in terms of how how to rehearse and to make go concentrate and listen to the director we yes you should not have said that no, we do. We, you have Don't to listen and, and talk to each other and listen to each other i think the most important <coughs> and the most exciting thing about making work is that you like each other yes and that really makes for very good theatre because you don't mind messing up in front of your friends. If there's someone you don't really like, you don't want to mess up in front of them. And if you don't mess up, how do you, how do you make okay. exciting choices? How do you pick good things to do? Do you think you and Molly wind each other up? A little. Mainly, it's mainly my fault. Come on! No. I've stopped locking around though. I've, I've just, uh, I think I've stopped. I've made a solemn vow, no matter how bad it gets, I will just bang my head against the wall, bite my tongue, and, and continue. If I can hear you correctly, you were saying that this was not going to be a professional production. Well, it isn't. Well, it is, actually. It is. It's a bunch of, it's a bunch of autistic people making a play. It's possibly going to be the worst thing ever on this earth, but... Hey, come on. It's the taking part. Is that what you're going to, is that what you're going to say? No, I was going to say it's the money. <laughs> <laughs> the plan was always to ease the cast through the process, gently getting them used to working and performing together. But now they've reached the final stage, the intensity must increase. On some long! <laughs> Xander, you go first. And just hold it there, okay, Andrew? I'm gonna see Xander first. Xander. And the directors go. must begin to direct. Now, that'll go back immediately. Claire and Jonathan, you have to focus because if we distract other people... No, seriously, come on. Very straight. Back again. I don't want any doubts. I go, my plinth, my lady, blah, 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 blah. Whatever is your action, okay. because I'm not sure. Go. I will defend your country. I'll do everything in, in my power to, to defend it. Do you pay attention because I'm going to do everything. The same thing with you guys. Are you, gonna, are you changing every time? Yeah. Yes, you are. No. Same action. Go back. No doubts again. Do you see it? Stand up. Look. Look. Say. I don't know. After today, I just feel a bit nervous. Oh my God, are we going to pull it off? 
Let me check your leg. That and then would you look. Can... That would look. <laughs> that would look uh, immortally strange. I'm not okay, having okay. him do okay. that. No way. That would look. Ma that would make me look gay. I'm not doing that. Ben, do you remember what they said upstairs? The doctor about trusting the director, trusting what they said, because from the outside they can make it look better. Do you remember he said that? <laughs> Can we change the actors? After only an hour of direction, it's clear how far the cast still have to go. This time, Leah, shall we run even more? Run, 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 and then, oops, where's my plinth? And go back. <laughs> okay? Shall we try it on? Oh, yeah, me too! <laughs> yes, so. Cheese! Soon! Next scene! Soon! Soon! I think the worst is yet to come. <laughs> I don't want to come in tomorrow. <laughs> I've remembered my lines. Yeah, I've remembered. Welcome to the still house of mine. I'm afraid you caught me at a rather bad time. Then we cut them. I mean, look at Andrew when you said, oh, maybe we'll change that line. <laughs> His world collapsed in front of him! We're taking big, big risks here. Big, enormous risks, and we're trying things that have never been tried. Usually you would do a show and you would do it only once. What? It's just... I can see. I can, I know, can, you just give me... You're, you're just, I'm, I'm thinking, oh, first I think, oh, OK, not bad. Now you're telling me, it reminding me of the risks that we're taking, and, and not just the risks, but the big, big risks. <laughs> but, I mean, well, you know, life is about risks, isn't it? Next time. I mean, this is my one shot at the big time. The cast reached the final stage. <laughs> What's going on with everybody? Oh my God. And the pressure builds. You have caused confusion and delay. I think we've been very ambitious. What to me? We've got 15 minutes left to go before the show. I remember Ben saying that we're autistic. We're not. We're, we're not normal. And I said, what are you, what are you talking about? If we are normal. So we're autistic, what's, what's, what's gonna happen? For more information about autism, go to channel4.com and search for Young, Autistic and Stage Struck. Now tonight at 10, Mark Dolan finds out if there are a bunch of spoiled brats in the world's richest teenager and me. Next though, Tony Robinson's back on Blitz Street, demonstrating the effects of the Herman bomb. This is the story of nine young people, all challenged by autism. I am Shady Addy. For the last few months, they have been trying to do what for them is virtually impossible. <laughs> Writing and performing. It's not me doing that. In their own show. It's a bunch of autistic people making a play. It's possibly going to be the worst thing ever on this earth, but hey, come on. Xander, you go first. Go. After their third week of rehearsals. No, same action, go back. They finally got their script. And the directors no way, that, would look, that would make me look gay. I'm not doing that. Have started directing. We're taking big, big risks here. Cheese on toast. Yes, so. Cheese. So, well, you know, life is about risks, isn't it? Now in their final week, oh they are moving onto the stage. I know this place is going to be absolutely condemned. Where, if all goes to plan... What's going on with everybody? They will be performing their final show. We've been very ambitious. Now it's up to them. It's me. I've got arrived for you. Oh, it's my script. Wicked. Oh, I'm just really looking forward to it. I mean, this is my one shot at the big time. We all made this. We made all of this on our own. It's the beginning of the final week for the cast. Oh, this is taking forever now. Come on, where was that last page? For the past few days, they've all been trying to learn their lines for their show. Adventures Inside. Just can't find the other word of me. 
and then you can do that. Uh, yeah. Go on, you do it. Band practice. Yes. Valuable assistant, in fact, is me. <laughs> Yeah, Vanny got that. <laughs> That's great, well done. It's going to be a great performance. Now, <laughs> let's talk about my chase. <laughs> Where are we going to lunch? We've got to learn this. Tommy! We've got Tommy. Do you want to go to the toilet first? No. It's in this for me, Jo. No! How do you think the plane's going to go? Terribly. Might just panic and wet myself and run off the edge screaming, Why did I do this? I love a summer yeah. day. I got my food. Thank you. So after he says that, then Molly comes into the room and the doctor says, Good morning. Are you here to see this patient? Yes. What is the rest of it? Yes. Yes, I am. No, yes, I have. 11-year-old Molly has two lines to learn for the final show. I have brought... Yes, I have brought him a present. A gift. A gift. A gift. Molly, you're not in the mood, are you? Mum, it's just because I'm tired. Hey, you guys, check out Dad's first starring role. It would be disappointing if she doesn't get up on the last day. For her to get up and say a single one line even, even if it is only one line and then she can't go on and do another line. It's, it's an amazing achievement for Molly. It's an amazing achievement for all nine of those autistic children to get up on stage in front of all those people. It's not, some, it's not something anyone can imagine nine ch autistic children would be able to do. So it's, it's going to be amazing to see. Well, but do you know your words when everyone is speaking, Molly? Yes, Mum. Over a four-month period, the cast have had three week-long rehearsal workshops. They now have only one more rehearsal week before the final performance at the end of the project. Girl, girl. Yeah. <laughs> What's up? You been all right? Yeah. I missed her um, lovable personality. Have you been okay? You want me? Yeah. Good. Feels like we've. We're coming round the bend and we're coming to the final furlong and um, just beginning that, that long stretch towards the finish line. So, um, so there's a sense that after this there's, there's no more we can't do. After this week, that's it. Everything has to be done now. Wednesday. Next Wednesday. It's like there's no playing, playing around. Serious saying that guys I'm very excited about this last bit of the project have you been studying yes yeah. have you enjoyed it yes. yes not only did the group now have a script but for the past few weeks their stage set has also been constructed it's quite they're gonna get quite excited about this aren't they the show the cast have created is a conceptual play based on what might take place in the mind of an autistic child. I mean, that's my tendency, I'm a child. <laughs> For those with autism, a change of environment can often bring anxiety. So during the second workshop, the cast was shown around the space to get them used to it. You have the feeling of how it feels, how it feels with the lights. The drama therapist who's experienced in working with people with autism is having a last minute check before work begins. The kids will want to run around, but actually it's quite difficult to run around here, isn't it? So it might actually be good for them to be focused, I think. And they will know this is where the audience sit, rather than pretending, you know. So that might help them to focus. Joseph is someone that I would slightly be concerned on how he adjusts to this space. He is the most um, sensitive to his environment. It's not just he notices change, because they all notice it, but he's affected by it more. So, we'll see. It seems that rather than making the cast anxious, moving into the new space has created excitement. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Molly! Everyone backstage, we need to be backstage now. Quick, 
Monsi and the choreographer decide to start rehearsals with the opening scene of the show, as it involves everyone in the cast. But it's proving difficult to keep Joseph calm and focused. Not yet, I'm searching. Get, get down. Get down. Speech again, which was very good. Joseph? Joseph? No, Joseph, stay there. Stay there. Joseph? Joseph? Quiet, Joseph. Just Joseph. Leon, Leon, Leon. Joseph? Joseph, look at me. Handle mouth. Exactly. Uh, keep handle mouth. Ah! <laughs> During the past three workshops, Joseph has become more and more relaxed in the group. His behaviour has become more excitable and more disruptive. <laughs> which often upsets the rest of the group. You have to help because you know we know that we all are different at different levels and Joe has problems communicating to the exterior what he feels. <laughs> Much of his behavior is an instinctive reaction to his environment, so he doesn't always understand that what he's doing might be inappropriate. No swearing. Naughty boy. No, you're not naughty. Right, there's just no swearing, then you can be God, can't you? Yeah. Yeah, so I'll hey, come on you. I'll come on you lot. Exactly. Right. Because yeah? if we keep getting distracted, we won't get him. It, it, right. Thank Andrew, you. ignore him. Come on. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. Okay, let's go. A trained care team is on hand to look after the cast. No! That's not nice. That's very naughty, Joseph. Joseph, look at me. You have caused confusion and delay. Because of the delay. Joseph, you pushed Mommy over. How naughty of you. Naughty. How dare you. I think we need to go to lunch. Okay, we're done. John. Okay, we're done for so today. Sorry. I don't like you, Joseph. I don't like you. Sorry. Don't push anymore, okay? No. All right. God. Yes. Go to lunch. Go to lunch. I know. So what go to lunch. You're doing great work. You know when you're dancing, how do you feel? All better. Na 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 You've got to say sorry to mommy first. Oh. No sweets. <coughs> no sweets now. No sweets. Sweets. Probably won't happen again. It's just... Sorry to mommy. Just... Like most children with autism, Joe has always been prone to impulsive behaviour. <laughs> However, last year it became worse than ever. Last year I felt like a prisoner in the six weeks holidays. In fact, one night I just rang the emergency services because she was smashing the house up. He was, he was throwing pliers across the floor in Terry's face. Just random smashing windows, kicking doors. <laughs> I was driving around in the car. He was kicking the car, he was attacking me in the car, so then I think, well, I don't take him out, so I was a bag of nerves. And uh, so one night I just rang the emergency services and said, you know, I feel like I'm a bridge with him. 
To help control his anxiety and depression, Joe was prescribed risperidone, an antipsychotic medicine used to treat atypical schizophrenia in adults. It's been the saviour, the medicine. Because it's helped him concentrate, learn again, settle back in school. Beautiful, aren't you? The challenge for the directors now is deciding how to respond to this latest incident with Joseph. I want to take him home. <laughs> what do you think? I, 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 I maybe skip him because, in the room. Yes, because the thing is, if you you need to escalate somewhere. So if it gets worse, then you might say send him home. But maybe for now, sit down, sit out, and and watch. It's more about whether the other eight kids see that he is being punished. It's not about Joseph. Come on, Joe. No more art. Right. I'm sorry for Molly, but I don't like make it too over the top because all afternoon you'll be anxious saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And he said sorry, and she'll be fine. And it takes time for it to heal. Keep them apart for this. For the rest of the day, Joseph will sit out of the rehearsals to show the rest of the cast that his behaviour is unacceptable. I will do everything in my power to return of the Earth Monkey safe. Oh! I know, Sam. This is happening. Hey! Don't say boo. He's not here. Yes, that's finished with the boost. It's normal. <laughs> Ham! What the incident with Joe has done is make some of the cast even more determined to make the show a success. We got very. Away I go. That's it. Ah, very good. If this sort of thing carry on, they might screw up. Might do it with at the moment performance. You don't want to do that, do you? The show is a collection of 12 very different but loosely connected scenes, all thought up by the cast. I wanted to um, do this because it's really important to me. But I've never done this with a lot of people. I've never done it with my friends before. We're together. To make the show a success, the battle for Ben, however, is as much with his autism. <laughs> so, Brenda, please get rid of Molly, please! She's driving me absolutely crazy. I can't take this anymore. As it is with other cast members. You see? Don't make me In the past, Ben's reaction to stressful situations. <laughs> uh, alone, f Leave me alone! Has been to escape. Now, however, he wants the play to succeed. Molly, leave! So he's having to fight his instinct to leave. He's holding himself together. He's, you know, he's really keen now. He's, he's coming to me and asking me, are we ready to start? Are we ready to, to, to begin again? And you want to harness that, that, that positive energy that it has. Work. Okay. Now you know what we mean by concentration. And still, we haven't put detail in some... Molly. Ah! Molly, can sit there. No, Molly. You remember that we said that there's certain behavior that's not acceptable. And that could be physically or... Verbally. Mentally. Verbally. And mentally. Mentally. You've been upsetting me as much as Joseph's been upsetting you. It felt really bad when he pushed you, didn't it? And you hurt. But you see, that's how other people feel sometimes when you're distressing someone, don't you? So now I, that will be good that you, when you go home you think about it. How it felt and how do you think it's feeling for others when you're distressing them. Sometimes you distress me as well. I feel being really pushed. Okay? Well done. Well done! Bye. It's going well, guys. It's going well. We've only got a week left. So that's eight days, actually. No, no because Sunday's off. So Saturday's off. We work on Sunday. Yeah. Seven days. Seven days. 
doesn't sound like a long time at all. As the importance of the performance is growing for Ben, he too is concerned about how little time is left and the limitations of the other cast members. Um, can you hurry up? This is really annoying me. I respect they have different types of water, so... It's just sometimes I just get really annoyed when... Uh, 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 when ev uh, when everyone else seems like uh, everyone else's capabilities are quite inferior. He was I'll really nice again. with Molly today really? when she hurt herself. Uh, she was more of a pain in the backside than what she was feeling. Oh, that's very sweet of you. <laughs> it was only sitting down that hurt her. Hurry up! Nearly done. Just making sure there isn't any lines. Like you've been, I'm a perfectionist. I don't care about perfection now! Right, get off of me! Have a dodgy haircut? Yes, I'd rather have a dodgy haircut. Now get off of me! Right, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> if you got right. sex tomorrow, it's your fault. Let's go, right? It's alright. Calm down. <laughs> Calm. Go ben back. doesn't quite understand that Molly also has learning difficulties. He's much more high functioning autistic than Molly is. I mean, Molly, I put, well, did put Molly on the high-functioning autism and realised since being here that she's not as high-functioning and she has a lot more sort of like things that she struggles with, which I didn't realise until I, we actually saw it here. So that was a bit hard to take, but that's Molly deals with it and as does Ben deal with his autism in his way. With only five days to go before the final performance, the pressure on rehearsals is intensifying. Each member of the cast has a part in the show. From Jonathan, who is in every scene, Destroy the evidence. and is in effect the lead character, to Molly, oh. Molly doesn't want to be in the play anymore. who's in only three scenes, <laughs> and isn't sure she wants to be in all of them. I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. She said she's not going to be in the play. Oh, my God. This way. Follow me. Shush, Ben. The music frees with everything. OK, we have you three there. So you are all going to be on the edge, yeah? So I'm just sitting down, thinking about how condemned this play is. This play is so condemned, but we can't even do a stupid Mr. Man dance. And if certain people won't shut their mouths when we're backstage. I've had enough. No. You want to be left alone? Yes. But I need to make sure you're safe. And you playing with this is not a safe thing. So it seems quite dangerous to me. No, it ain't dangerous. It's just a bit butt string. Hmm? Throughout the past few months, it's been a struggle to get Molly involved. Do you want to be part of this? No. Molly has an additional diagnosis of pathological demand avoidance. She'll do anything in her power to avoid situations that make her anxious. Some, some of these kids can only be in the moment. Yeah. Like Molly, if she doesn't like it and it's not a good experience, she's out. Because even thinking about the future requires the imagination and some of these kids completely in the moment. If they're not enjoying the moment, they're out. Leah! For the first time in her life, Molly is now part of a team. And as such, she has people relying on her to perform. No, I seriously don't. I'm not joining in. Okay, so yourself. It's your fault that, 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 that you sat in the back. So you're the one who, did, who wasn't in so much scenes. That's why. Because you did not take part. So that's your fault. Your, 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 that's what something when you come at you, you have to think about the next time. 
If you get chosen, you have to, you have to think of what those things what I just said. Okay? That ain't good enough. Yes, it is. That ain't. Yes. That ain't good enough. This is not this. What is your reason? This is you and you. Are you scared? Huh? Are you scared of No, I'm not scared. I just don't want to be part of this thing. See yourself. You know, what do you do with this? So far, I haven't seen her try. And it doesn't matter the reasons. We know that deep down, the reasons are, you know, that his self-esteem, and then she's wanting us to believe that she doesn't fail, but she doesn't want to. But the bottom line is that we have four days, and we cannot have this. So the bottom line is that normal circumstances should be out. Can we talk with the family? Yes. For the sake of everyone involved in the show, Monsi and David need to know if Molly wants to or is even willing to continue. Okay, how can we put this? Molly is not taking part. Not only is not taking part now, but it's being destructive to others. So it's delaying the whole process a lot and a lot. So I want to give her more, but I have to actually give her less. And at this point in time, we don't know how to proceed. Molly's biggest fear in life is failing, and for you then to do this to her would be not good. That's why we're having this conversation now, here, to give another chance. Molly's been excluded for everything in her life. She does not need to be excluded from this as well. It's been four, four weeks now that we've been pulling her in, pulling her in, that we need her to make the effort as well. Yeah. She's got to meet us halfway, Sabina. Sir Martin, rise. <laughs> no, let's try again. Let's do it a little bit slow. Sorry. It's okay. No one's perfect. Let's keep trying. Can I just read that bit? The Queen of the All Earth right. Monkeys. All right, go ahead. The Queen of the Earth Monkeys. There are three days left before the final performance. Would you go on this rescue mission? I will. <laughs> yeah. So hard. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Just, just keep going. After the family's discussion with the directors, Molly has agreed to try harder in rehearsals. Friends, you mean such a lot. You're the only ones I've got. I'm gonna be feeling I'm on my way. <laughs> Now today is introducing the costumes. The thing is that every time you introduce something new, it adds a, a, a level of um, excitement and, um, and distraction. And there's still things in the show, regardless of the costumes, that we, we need to kind of focus on. What are you looking forward to, David? Climb some trees. It'd be great to see how they respond to, to, to costumes. It might make it feel really real to them now that it's, it's, this is really happening. Jason, I've got you a yellow shirt. Let's try this shirt on you. Are you OK with that? Yeah. Good. If we take that top off, OK? Because otherwise you'd get a bit hot, I think. OK, let's see. <laughs> You've been excellent. <laughs> That's nice. That looks like it's going to fit. It's just different. It's just sort of quite complicated. It's lunch time. I feel like maybe I, I've, I'm treading on eggshells or, you know, at any point they might, might just hate that I've put them in um, something, you know, I'm just unsure about, you know, how they're going to respond to things. Try them on. No. Please? No. I mean, it's just trying it on. See what it looks like. Take it off and. They're trying and failing to be to avoid being rude, but seriously, no. Okay, these go over your ears. You don't like it? No. You really don't like it? No. It's going to make you um, louder. No. 
Look, I, I'll show you. I'll show you. It goes like this. And it's not. It's not dangerous. Mm. Do you want to try it again? And no. I'll have to make sure it's comfortable. No. You know when you're an earth monkey. Mm -hmm. Um, you'll be wearing this. I mean, over what, uh, what you've got on. Are you okay with that fabric? Uh, I'm not sure about that. You're not sure? Okay. Thanks, anyway. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if there is any problem, Dimpy will come out and say, please put the lights on. Okay? Despite their resistance to putting on costumes, the cast are now ready to start their first proper dress rehearsal. Can you try it with the moron? There's a sense of excitement actually. This is the first time they're all dressed in the costumes and everyone's backstage and it's going to be a run through with, a, with all the props and all the costumes, so we'll see. But having props and costumes and lights and a script to rehearse means more anxiety for the cast. Tommy Coming. And for the directors. Neil. And now it's been forced uh, to dance. Ah, uh, yes. Again, so Claire, 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 time off. You did great, but everybody else forgot that bit. To request that I accompany you on this. What? Even with the microphones, I can't hear you. Sorry. And can you talk to me as well? I'm here. I'm audience. We've been very ambitious. They don't seem to remember things we've done a thousand times. Yes. We want to just carry on until this scene ends and then you Claire. tell us what we did wrong. No, 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 Claire. We're not carrying on. We're going from the beginning again and again and again. That's Claire. lame. Relax. You're doing great. Just relax. We know it's hard. Sit down if you want. If we would have been much less ambitious, OK? We don't even have a set. Uh, we have a few costumes. You know, might have been easy on everybody. But this scale is scary. For Ben, however, it's not the scale of the show that's scary. It's the Mr. Men dance. Tap and step, step and forward and back and... Why is this even in the play? I'm trying to think, why is this dance in the play? Sure, Andrew told a story. We didn't have to throw it. We didn't have to throw in and make us look, all look like complete idiots. Side and we do it again, don't we? Bend and up and bend. That would be a step towards David. Step side. Oh, I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ruin me rapid school as a tough guy. I, I, I make myself look like a bloody idiot. I mean, I'm meant to be tough. I'm meant to be. He's, he's son. I'm not meant to be he's some idiot wandering around in a bloody Mr. Man mask. <laughs> With only a day left before their final performance, some parts of the show are beginning to seem like an impossible task. And step to the side. Keep going, Molly. Okay, fine. Both for the directors. Right, should we do that from the beginning with music? Molly, don't do that because you might destroy it. And for the cast. Fantastic. Everyone off stage. Come, Molly, let's get you in the line. Okay, so Molly, while everyone's gone backstage, do you want me to do the steps with you? No. What do you want to do? I want to get out of it. It doesn't matter. What matters is taking part. Absolutely. Because if you look at Alex, every time I do the step, he does the wrong way. OK, here we go. I know this play's going to be absolutely condemned. Yeah, it always goes wrong at the last bit. Always, so, always something, ain't, something that's good for uh, something I think may it turn out very good for one and it will go wrong. It always does. That's all I'm asking you to do is give it a try. I can't go and try. Knowing how much the cast are relying on Molly to perform, her parents are doing what they can to get her back into the rehearsals. I'm just asking you to give it a little try. Okay, I'll do it one time and I'm getting up. One time. If you do it one time good and then we'll see what happens after, yeah? <laughs> we don't know if she wants to take part or not. We convince her one minute and then the next minute is not having any of it. So the worry is, what happens if on the day she walks out and then looks around and says, sits down on stage, I'm not doing it. So for it's her own good, we had to... It's just that thing of them realising that there are other people 
that are depending on them. And it's just just a bit blind to that thing mm. of of the responsibility. But at the same time, when they shut down, they shut down. Come here, sweetie, come here. You might not take part in the dance, but the least you can do is to be showing support, okay? Molly, please. Oh, where is Jonathan now? What's going on with everybody? As the final day of rehearsals draws to a close, it's become crystal clear how precarious this whole endeavour really is. Jonathan sometimes experiences emotional breakdowns. They can be triggered for many reasons, but are often sensory or information overload. But he has always been the most dependable member of the cast. He's in almost every scene. In fact, without him, there is no show. In 24 hours, he should be leading the cast out onto the stage for their final performance. You know that there's nothing you can really do until it, it, it burns itself out. And it always does. And it's just a case of getting him into a place of safety, quickly. Well, this is why I don't go out with him, you yeah. see. It's why we'd, we've shut ourselves away to a large extent. It's a huge ask. It is a huge ask for nine autistic kids to ask them to work with one another, understand and empathise in order to put this play on. Here we are. There are moments of fragility and moments of um, collapse, but that is to be expected. That is not a problem. That's reality. You know, you ask their parents, they'll probably say this is a... This is not something that's abnormal. This is a normal daily existence. And I guess what the directors have to do is have a um, perspective. It's not going to be the perfect performance. It will be just how it's meant to be. And it will be perfect for that reason. Bye, Sandra. <laughs> It's the day of the final performance. It ain't gonna be easy, I'll tell you that. Oh, look, it's either gonna be very easy, or it's gonna go catastrophic. And I'm going with the catastrophic thing. Well, that's good, girl. Put on. Oh, I know. Put all my stuff on the floor. Molly, a little less stress, please. They'll be performing their show in front of 150 people including many of their friends and family. This is a big night tonight. It's brilliant. I know, are you looking forward to it? Yes. Are you a bit nervous or you, do you think you can just go ahead and do it? I think I will do. Are you nervous? I'm not nervous at all. You're not nervous at all? No. Oh, that's good. Okay. We've the got, people ain't coming. We've got 15 minutes left to go before the show. We just need to now just focus and be calm. I'm already calm, so why am I doing this? Hold on, Molly. I'm not calm, Molly. It's quite so We do it all together, Molly. We do it all together. It's bad for me. It's not exclusive. Oh. Focus. Focus. Okay, we'll take three. We'll take three breaths Molly. What? I'm all right. I don't need to do that. Okay, let's carry on. and excited. I always get both nervous and excited. Are you OK? Yeah. Now we have a show that it can actually has the potential to be a good show. I think the audience will understand. Even if things go wrong, they'll understand. So we are in a good place. Now it's up to them.
Remember Ben saying after VM VM rehearsal, he kind of said that we're autistic, we're not we're, we're not normal. And I said, what are you, what are you talking about? We, we are normal. So we're autistic. What's 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 gonna happen? It's ten minutes until showtime. Four months ago, this group of autistic people met for the first time. My name's Andrew, guys, and Jackson's the name. Can I get out of it, please? I am very lonely in this uh, in this world. And that makes me upset. It makes me think about what a crummy life I have. I do have autism. It's hard being autism. If I could take Molly's disability away, I would. Tomorrow, right now, the second, if she could have a normal friendship and a normal life. Every time when I'm like walking somewhere, I, I always see like boys with friends who make them laugh so much. So I just want that. All I just want is to be treated really normal. They may have found friendship together. There is still the small matter of putting on a show. Guys, they are ready for us. Everyone feeling right? We take one last mm. deep breath in and out. Very nice. When you're ready, follow me in all. For the opening scene, everyone in the cast will be on stage. Everyone that is, except for Molly. If the scene is to work, she must, for the first time, overcome her fear and enter stage on cue. Good morning. I hear, heard you came to see a patient. Yes, I have bought him a gift. Very well. I'll give you a few minutes. Come on, nurse. There is a gift. What do you say? You're welcome. <laughs> As you know, the Queen of the Earth Monkeys has been kidnapped by the evil voodoo priest and his dragon of whales. <gasps> and now, she's been forced to dance to music deep in the jungle of Babylonia. Yay! Will you go on this rescue mission? I will. Yay! Yay! Let's go! You go on the horse first. No, you first. No, you. No, you first. No, you. No, you! No, you! Okay, let's just go together. <laughs> I've enjoyed acting, actually, meeting, meeting new, new people, getting on, working together. That's what I really enjoyed. Good. That all you got? Uh, it's, it's, it's had its ups and downs, mainly downs, but OK. It's been all right. Oh! Freeze! Freeze it! Hold up! I guess I've learnt, uh, earned a bit more tolerance. Hut, hut, hut! Right? Oh, I'm sure. Oh, ah, we're good here! Ah, I was checking the drain pipes for raccoons. I thought there was a raccoon infestation, which might be very, very, very dangerous. Got any ID? No. 
ain't happening there. Nobody gets past me without my permission. Well, I got permission from my mum. Oh, your mum! <laughs> I got more bravery in focusing on people and more and more sort of louder with my voice in actions. I bless the streets with peace. That's why they call me the police, yeah. I bless the streets with peace. That's why they call me the police. Bolly does her singing in her own little world, in her own little room, but she doesn't have friends. She, it's her first friends that she's had and she's enjoying them. She's just loved it and seeing her face and that is the most important thing that I think Molly has got from it and I think that it will stay with her. I shall use my magic powers. You're a chicken. I guess I'm sad that we have to leave and it's going to be like all over. Hold on. I know you. You're my long lost brother. This was a fantastic experience and I just feel better in myself than I used to feel knowing that I'm not alone. Other children actually wanted to spend time with him. And that, from Jonathan's point of view, has never happened on a day-to-day -day basis. I think he's probably been the happiest that I've seen him ever. No, really, Jay. Josie, this is your gift. Your gift. It nearly brought a tear to my eyes, just that bit, to see that he's with friends. I mean, the disability will never be cured, but it, it can get better, you know. Oh, hello, welcome. It's hard when you've got a child with a disability because people see them as, as, as though they've got nothing about them. You caught me at a rather bad time. But no matter, I could see you here, and I should tell you my story. There's a situation where your child can, can shine and, and their talents can be shown, then that, that's what you want. You want people to see them because it's, it's natural for a mum. I had a, a great time taking part. Yeah, yeah. That show is more, more and more valuable than ever, <laughs> I imagine. I suppose that's good. <laughs>